were the only ones fighting for the truth of what happened to John O'Keefe. And me and my family and my attorneys and my team have marshaled every resource to get to the truth. It just feels like no one else wants it. And Karen, just to be clear, you didn't do it. We know who did it, Steve. We know. And we know who spearheaded this cover-up. You all know. Yes, we do. And no, she didn't do it. No, she didn't do it. This is an innocent woman. She didn't do it. I tried to save his life. Yeah. I tried to save his life at 6 in the morning. I was covered in his blood. I was the only one trying to save his life. Why'd you admit to it? He didn't, she didn't admit to it. She didn't admit to anything close to that. Nothing close to that. And you should know that. I was like three or four times she said it. To no, no, she didn't. that's not true. She asked a question. It makes absolutely no sense. That is the Commonwealth grasping at straws. If it walks like a duck and talks like a duck, it's a duck. We have the eight letters. We've seen them. We've read them. We are using them. The genie cannot be put back in the bottle. Yeah, LTL true crime. We going deep in the dark. Yeah, yeah. Peeling back the layers, expose the hidden mark. Oh, yeah. From the streets to the alleys where the secrets lie. Getting into minds of the wicked, no alibi. LTL true crime unraveling the web of evil No stone left unturned, we diving to the prime They'll be digging up the dirt, bringing justice to the crime LTL true crime unveiling dark realities every time Yeah, LTL true crime, we going deep in the dark Peeling back the layers, exposed to him more from the streets to the alleys where the secrets lie Get it things in mind, something wicked, no alibi <laughs> Well, 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 what is going on? What is going on, everybody? Wow. Wow, 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 wow. So many interesting things. So Such an interesting day in the Karen Reed case. Uh, I'm still blown away. I'm still blown away at everything that we heard in court today. Jackson and Yanetti on fire. Just completely on fire today. And... I mean, just some of the things, I mean, you saw the reaction on Turtle Boy's stream, and I want to thank Turtle Boy for letting, allowing me to come over there today and hang on the panel. I had a great time with him in the glare. Um, I mean, you saw the reaction. I mean, it's just jaw-dropping all day. Uh, it was unbelievable, unbelievable. And um, I'm still just trying to rattle everything around here in my head of what happened today and just, you know, all this truth that came out. And it just, it goes on and says, it confirms that everything that Turtle Boy has been reporting on, everything that he has dug into and blogged about, at countless, endless blogs, I think well over 300 blogs, maybe close to 400 on this case, has been true, has been true. And it's got to make him feel, I know he's extremely emotional. I mean, you could see it today. You could see it today. Extremely emotional, but it's got to make him feel good inside. That all this hard work, all this sacrifice that he has done to put into this, sacrificing uh, himself and putting it all on the line and being falsely accused uh, by the Commonwealth to spend 60 days in jail for free speech. 
Uh, it's got to at least make him feel good inside that all this hard work has been paying off and everything that he has said has been true. And um, it's such a great day. I mean, overall, we'll get to some of the key takeaways. I want to welcome everybody in. Thank you all uh, so much for being in here. I do appreciate it. And uh, we'll get the show rolling. So essentially what I'm going to do here today is uh, Turtle Boy is going to be on live with Howie Carr. We'll play through that. And then we'll take this right into the Canton Select Board meeting. Um, I do have a video that I'd love to play. Before that, though, um, Tim from Canton Community TV put a nice together a little montage, a nice video. I always call them montages. Montage of uh, the last time that I was out at the um, uh, the Morsi protest, the peaceful protest that we had at Morsi's office. And uh, I want to play that video because I don't think Tim gets enough credit and he does fabulous videos. He sent me the link to it. I'm going to play that here and, um, you know, we'll check it out here. We're just waiting for TV to go live on Howie Carr. It's going to be a couple minutes and then we can talk about some of the key takeaways from today. And if we have a little bit more time to kill in between getting ready for the Canton select board meeting, We'll just play back the uh, the Jackson testimony today, and we'll go through that again. And um, I always love review, so that's great. All right, let's play this. This is from uh, Tim from Canton Community TV. Tim, thank you so much for, I guess, really doing kind of a spot here with me. But the the, the best thing about this is it shows the whole community. Does, he did a really great job on this video. All right, let's play this here. Three weeks after a February 6th protest outside the Norfolk County District Attorney's Office, protesters returned on February 29th, decrying what they describe as a deliberately botched investigation into the murder of Canton resident and Boston police officer John O'Keefe, who was found dead on the front lawn of another Canton resident and Boston police officer, Brian Albert, on January 29th, 2022. John O'Keefe's girlfriend, Karen Reed, has been charged with his murder, but protesters here say that the prosecution of Karen Reed is part of a cover-up involving the district attorney's office and its investigators. About 30 protesters gathered in front of the office of Norfolk County District Attorney Michael Morrissey on Charmette Road in Canton starting at 3 p.m., with many of the protesters from three weeks ago returning. Oh, that We're back because we had... Um such good feedback from last time and we're still legally in the same spot we were in last time so we thought we'd come back and uh, pay another visit to remind them why we're here and how's it going out here today great it is freezing and all these people came out and i really 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 appreciate it because it's it's not um it's not comfortable so it's going really well everyone seems in good spirits it's cold out here, but, uh, you know, we got some people, we got some supporters showing up. Um, I think the rollover from this past weekend of being out for Aiden and for Karen on uh, Monday has really kind of spilled over. People are here and people are still trying to speak up and, and, and make sure that everyone knows what we're here for. And that's for justice for everyone. Karen Reed, Aiden, the First Amendment. We're here to do to make sure that the feds know and everybody else knows that something's wrong and we're here to, to make things better if we can. All right, I'm gonna spin the camera around everybody so everybody can see what's going on. Social media have put many eyes on this case and on to Canton. The or Dream Yard right now is malfunctioning. I got banners stuck everywhere right now. Okay, there we go, we got that down. Hopefully it didn't malfunction anymore. Let me just back this up. I missed a little bit of this. Here we go. See what's going on. Social media have put many eyes on this case and on to Canton. The organizers of this protest host a YouTube channel called Resistant to Silence, which runs programs and discussions about the Karen Reed case. And live streaming here today was another YouTube channel, LTL True Crime. I'm out here today supporting the free Karen Reed movement with all, with all, with all these lovely people out here today. And this is now a worldwide case, and people don't understand that. I mean, this is now reaching, I think there's a guy in Wales that actually streams about this. So this movement is huge, um, and it's just to fight back against corruption and be out here and, and be with these fine people. Do you know how many people are watching your live stream now, and what sort of comments do you get from them? Sure, I got about almost about 400 people now currently on the live stream. Uh, they're all in support. A lot of people are saying, free Karen Reed. And uh, they believe, you know, they believe that uh, everything that is the Commonwealth is trying to do uh, to Karen. And uh, it's just it's not right. It's not true. It's not right. It factually does not add up. 
After a program is live streamed on YouTube, it is often posted to that channel for anybody to watch at any time. <clears throat> Since this protest one week ago and those viewing on that day, the LTL True Crime live stream has had more than 8,000 views, according to the count on YouTube. The channel, which was mentioned as being in Wales, a country more than 3,000 miles away from Canton, is called the Alternate Corner and has been covering this case and another one in Canton, the Sandra Birchmore case. A discussion of the Karen Reed case with the channel's host, Dylan, and guest former Canton resident and retired DEA agent, Sean McDonough, has had more than 7,500 views since it streamed live two weeks ago. Protests in Canton used to be rare, but in the past year, they have become, if not ordinary, not uncommon. And with today's technology, they are seen by many more than those who go by on the day. Still here, not going anywhere. The Norfolk County District Attorney's Office did not have a comment on this protest. For CCTV, I'm Tim O'Connor. Tim was great. That was great. That was a great video. I hope Tim's watching. It was really nice work. That was really good. I don't think that he was kind of in the background a lot, um, but I thought it was uh, it was great. Put that little spot together. Amy in Boston, member for three months. Thank you for the support. She says, today was epic. Hashtag free Karen Reed. I can't agree with you more. I was, I'm, I'm, my mouth, my jaw was dropped on the floor uh, through that whole stream today. And like I said, I, I had such fun being up with TV. I think at one point we had over 60 uh, 6,200 people watching. I think that was either his closest to his biggest live stream or close to uh, his biggest live stream. So that was that was a real honor to be on that panel today uh, with TV and glare and, and and got to kind of team up a little bit here. Okay, so let's um let's look at some of the key takeaways. Uh, I wrote down some key takeaways here from this afternoon. Again, I don't have everything to put together, but uh, you know I, I wanted to take some of these. So key takeaways from today. He was the FBI that verified the Google search, uh, Jen McCabe's Google search conducted at 2.27 a.m. with Lally offering no denial of the search. So there's been no denial of that search. On February 1st, 2022, Courtney Proctor texted her brother, Michael Proctor, about Julie, Colin Albert's mother, wanting to give him a thank you gift once everything settles. Michael suggests giving a gift for his wife, Elizabeth, uh, instead. Uh, I put as in there by accident. So during, the uh, during his testimony to the federal grand jury, Michael Proctor acknowledged having a relationship with the Alberts and conceded that he had mi uh, minimized the extent of his relationship. He also informed his supervisor, Bukaki, uh, of his connection of the Alberts prior to the uh, Colin Alberts interview. Uh, contrary to the grand jury testimony, claiming uh, they were asleep, phone records so Brian Albert and Brian Higgins had a conversation at 2.22 a.m. I want to let everybody sink that in. Let that sink in. 2.22 a.m. And then what happened right at that? So five minutes later, Jen McCabe Googles on her phone. That was confirmed by the FBI. And we saw the tweets from Jennifer Coffendapper today talking about her own organization, her own, her people, her people that she rolls with, that she's been with, that has worked for, the FBI has confirmed that 227 happened and she still denies it because she goes on and says, uh, well, it's because the defense is saying it. Do you think that Jackson, Unetti, or Little would stand up in front of an open court and lie about something fed the FBI said to confirm? Do you think that they would lie about that and risk their careers to be disbarred? It, it's virtually impossible. They would not do it. Under ethics, they would not do it. They would be in huge trouble if that was a lie. And you look at Lally. Lally didn't really say anything when they were saying this. He didn't say anything to deny any of this. He tried playing. Uh, he tried playing three card Monty today. He said that the defense was, but surely his game was three con three card Monty. And I can't believe that he got up and continued 
going on with his statements and his rebuttals that they're going to push this all the way through. You're going to try to push this through to a trial. Do you know how embarrassing that's going to be for the Commonwealth? And, and I almost like, it was funny. I was out to, uh, what do we call it? Linner. I was out to Linner with my better half before the show and we were talking about it. And I said, you know what? I almost feel, and I know I'm probably going to get shit for this. I almost feel bad for the poor bastard, Lally. I mean, he's the one. That's got, I mean, you look at the guy today. He clearly didn't want to be there. His body language is like, I just want this to be over. I don't want to be involved in this. You know, Morsi's pushing him. Just pushing the button. You better or you're going to be out. I mean, this poor guy is going to be the fall guy in the end of it. I mean, totally going to be in there. I was talking about that on TV stream today, too. I mean, he's going to be the ultimate fall guy in all of this. Uh, but to go along with it and, and sit there and lie when you know all the evidence in front of you and it's clearly showing that the feds figured all of this out uh, to be true as what we've known all along. So it goes on to say, um, contrary to the grand jury's testimony claiming that they were asleep, phone records show Brian Albert and Brian Higgins, I think I already said this, had a conversation at 2.22 a.m. on the night John was killed. Subsequently, Michael Morrissey authorized Brian Albert and Brian Higgins to destroy their phones. And then another key takeaway, the final point here that I have really quick is the, and there's, there's many, many of them, uh, the, uh, the the FBI's in independent expert the fbi's independent expert that has three phds in this area reconstructed the scene now let's think about that someone that's not even not even uh connected to this case the fbi goes out and gets a neutral person that has tons of experience in this area crime scene reconstruction uh accident reconstruction, whatever it may be, and ask them to come in and recreate this crime scene to find out if this was possible. Was it possible for Karen Reed and Karen Reed's SUV to strike John the way that the Commonwealth is saying that, that she did and kill him? The expert conclusively determined that the damage to Karen Reed's vehicle did not result from an impact with Officer John O'Keefe, thereby clearing Karen Reed and her vehicle from any involvement in John O'Keefe's death. So where would you be pointing that finger now? Where would you in this audience be pointing that finger now? 34 Fairview, something happened in that house. We know what happened in that house. We will find out what happened in that house. It's becoming very clear now. Very, very clear. And don't worry, the trolls will go on and they will say, oh, it couldn't have happened. The defense is lying. You know, just like Coffin Daffer, the defense is lying. Your own boys, the FBI, have confirmed this. Have confirmed it. Uh, and I couldn't even believe that this didn't get dismissed today. But I have to say, I have to say, and I was talking about this at Linner as well. And uh, I said, you know, I actually gave Bev a little bit of credit today. She had the memo. I think it was a 50-page memo. She's already read it. She's already read the 3,000-plus pages of the report. And she actually let Jackson and Yanetti talk today and i was kind of surprised by that but she actually let them go i think she has to i think she has to now knowing that the feds are involved knowing that just like unetti said today the active federal investigation is still active is still active and i gotta give unetti a lot of credit too getting up there and calling lally a liar on the record today getting that on the record that lally has been lying has been lying. All right. So again, those are some of the key takeaways that I had. Uh, just a few of them. And there are many, many more. Many, many more uh, jaw-dropping moments here. We have about, uh, let's see. We have about five minutes till TB is supposed to join Howie Carr. Uh, we'll wait for that. 
I'm just going to look at the chat here and see what everybody is saying. Yeah, she did still interrupt, but I have to say that she, she, I think, gave them a little bit more today. Uh, and I thought the back and forth uh, was good. They did have their time. I love that Jackson went in um, thinking that he was going to have essentially all the time in the world today because Beb made that promise last time. But Jackson didn't get rattled. He readjusted uh, right away. And I think he got the most important because he is just, he probably, I mean, they, oh, my voice cracked. Oh, he probably knew, he probably knew that she was going to cut down on time, but, you know, went and said, oh, you know, we weren't ready for this, but came out bombing every anyway and dropped bombs, completely dropped bombs. Um, and I like the fact that he readjusted on the fly. He didn't let him, uh, didn't let it get him rattled and he just went for it and just dropped bombs today. Stuff that we haven't even heard yet. Stuff that we've been waiting to hear in all of this. So I thought um, he crushed it. I, I have to say Jackson absolutely crushed it. And then uh, Unetti at the end, cleaning it up, essentially uh, laying down the law, wiping Lally, uh, wiping the floor with Lally at the end was great too. And, uh, you know, essentially calling Lally a liar in open court and getting it on the record. Uh, was amazing. So we have about another five minutes or so until uh, TB joins Howie Carr. We'll we'll play that segment. And then also uh, that should take us right into the Canton Community uh, Select Board meeting because uh, I planned on streaming that tonight. And if we have some time in between that, we'll replay the uh, the the court hearing from this afternoon and, and listen to a little bit of that here. So let me pull up Howie Carr. I'll get that up on the screen. Appreciate everybody being in here with me today. Um, Oh, by the way, I don't know if you saw on Facebook, I gave a studio update. I dropped a little bit of a video there today. I was there. I dropped off my rent check and met with my landlord again today. He's super excited to get me in the building. Of course, the spot is not completely finished yet. It will be ready on April 1st. Uh, he's rehabbing the whole building. It's going to be beautiful. And uh, I'm really excited to get in there. It's It's awesome. It's like happening. You know, I was like, it's happening. I can't believe it. It's actually really going to happen to have an actual uh, module working studio that I can go in and be super creative and really kind of start letting myself out a little bit more. You know, I have neighbors, so I got <laughs> to be a little bit sensitive to them, uh, but it's it's definitely happening. So <clears throat> all good things there. I'm super, super excited about it. And, um, you know, just getting it set up. And I said, you know, I'm going to promise myself I'm not going to go live until I feel that it's really ready to go with the visual impact that I have. And I went in there today and I said, you know, I'm going to split this into two uh, module studios where I'll have a single desk on one side for, for podcasts like this. Uh, probably pretty similar to what Howie's doing, a little bit more jazzy. Um, and then I'll have an area where I can have some guests in. It's nice. It has a nice built out common, common room that I can rent out. So uh, not rent out. I'm sorry. Just let my landlord know if I need to use that access space as a fridge, a uh, coffee maker, but I can have one of my live guests come in. We can sit in that conference room for a little bit, kind of get to unwind before we actually go into the studio. Uh, it's going to be pretty badass. So I'm super, super excited for it. And, you know, I knew that this year I was going to go for it on YouTube and put, put it all in and put it all on the line. Um, I had been wanting this for quite a while. And I think that it's, something that's needed to elevate the channel and get it onto the level that I want to go. And it's going to just keep going. You know, I'm, I'm going all or none. I'm, I'm really just throwing it on the table this time. It's all or none. And, uh, you know, I have a year, a year on the lease and have to see how it goes. We'll have to see how it goes. All right. About another two minutes. And thank you for all the congratulations. I, I appreciate it. Um, another about two minutes. How he should be on with TB. He's probably doing commercials right now. We'll pull that up when TB gets on. And, um, you know, again, I thank you. I, I'm I'm so happy that you're all here. You know, I look back at the channel where it was probably just under a year ago. I barely was clipping, you know, 2,000 uh, subscribers. And this channel is now built to almost 17,500 subscribers. It's unbelievable. And it's going to keep going, you know, and I have a lot of things planned. The studio is going to be a huge inspiration for me, and I, I can't wait. So thank you. Thank you for all the, the congratulations. So good stuff. All right, we'll 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 see what's going on with Howie. He's probably got commercials. Yeah, we'll wait here. 
Um, thank you. Appreciate that. Okay, let's see what Howie's got saying here. It's been going on now for over two years, and it's here we go. It's just a uh, very convoluted, complicated uh, story of in look, increasingly looks like massive corruption at the prosecutorial level. And uh, today there was more evidence of that. And uh, there was a hearing. The trial is supposed to start next month. But, uh, you know, who, who knows if it's going to start or not at this point uh, or if it's going to be thrown out. But uh, one of the people that's most intimately involved in this case is uh, Aiden Kearney, a.k.a. Turtle Boy. He went to jail for, for 60 days for basically for reporting on this case with uh, Karen Reed. And he's been reporting about how the FBI was involved in the case and the feds. And I, and I, <laughs> I cautioned him. I said, don't expect the FBI to ride, uh, ride to your rescue and Karen Reed's rescue and on a white horse. I was wrong. I'm going to say that right now. I was wrong. They did write right to the rescue today. Uh, joining us now on the line is uh, Aiden turtle boy. Kearney he just posted, he just posted uh, his uh, own account at uh, tbdailynews.com which is a very complete account, a very good, uh, good way to read it. The, the paper still just can't seem to get their, uh, get their arms around this story. Aiden, I, I don't think it's totally uh, sinister. They just, they just don't understand the ins and outs of this, do they? I mean, I, I don't get it. It's, it's one of the most exciting stories I've ever covered. It's happening in our backyard. It's one of the biggest stories in the country. And the media just seems interested in regurgitating whatever the district attorney's office tells them. I mean, the story has so many twists and turns, and you can find it all just by going on Facebook and reading these people's profiles, finding things on your own. It's basically what we've done in yeah. this case. I want to read you. I want to read you what uh, what Karen Reed's attorney, uh, uh, Alan Jackson, said today, which I think this is the biggest part of it uh, about uh, about the car. This is FBI hired experts investigating whether the car actually killed police officer John O'Keefe, who. Karen Reed her bo is accused of, of murdering, second-degree murder. This is what he said at, at, from the uh, reports that were turned over to the defense and the prosecution by the U.S. Attorney's Office. The federal investigators hired, independent of us, we had no idea, and independent of the Commonwealth, hired a professional reconstructionist, three PhDs, to look into exactly this issue, who, who stru what struck John O'Keefe. Did Karen Reed's car, did her SUV make contact with John O'Keefe? And their conclusion to a person was his injuries were inconsistent with the damage on the car. The damage on the car was inconsistent with having made contact with John O'Keefe's body. In other words, the car didn't hit him and he wasn't hit by the car. Isn't that game, set, match or whatever they say, Aiden? It, it should be. And if the car didn't hit him, Howie... And how did Michael Proctor find 35 pieces of KLA on five undocumented trips? The, answer, the only logical conclusion is they planted evidence. And you're right. This should be game, set, match. There's only one person that gets to decide that. Because clearly the district attorney's office has no shame and no honor. They responded to these bombshells today by talking about how I went out to lunch <laughs> with uh, Alan Jackson <laughs> in May. I mean, that's, that's what they decided to deflect to instead of these bomb. They didn't address any of these, deny anything, because why would they? They got caught. So D there's only one person that can now step in and, and do something. And her name is Beverly Canoni. The judge. And up until this point, I've had, yeah, the judge. I've had very little faith in Auntie Bev. But today she did let Alan Jackson and David Unetti talk for longer than she, uh, than she initially planned. It seemed like she was a little bit better than them. Uh, a little bit better to them than she usually is and if, if she has any honor she will dismiss this immediately because this cannot continue this is a farce and if they prosecute this woman and she's acquitted that just gives them the excuse not to go after the people that actually did this well you know this, this is i again the, the car is 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 the bombshell development here today but there there are other problems this this uh the state cop, one of the people that's assigned to the district attorney's office uh, to investigate, his name is Proctor. And he told the state grand jury that he had no relations with the, uh, the Alberts where the, the house where uh, John O'Keefe, uh, you know, spent his last hours before somebody put him out on the lawn. Uh, but he did have, he did have a relationship, did he not? And he, and he admitted it to the feds. Yeah. He admitted it to the feds that he had told 
he had falsely said he didn't have a relationship with the people he was supposed he should have been investigating. Howie, I got indicted for the same thing. His boss, Brian Tully, testified that, uh, that Michael Proctor is the only person in the Proctor family who isn't friends with the Alberts. I guess they kept him chained in the basement when they did family <laughs> visits. That's what they want us to believe. We all knew because Michael Proctor doesn't have social media, so he's not posting pictures of himself with them. But his mother is, and his sister is, and everyone else in his family is, and they want us to believe that he has no relationship with them. But now we know. Now we've seen the feds found text messages of Michael Proctor asking Julie Albert to babysit his kids 10 days before John Julie Albert lives and in the, she's the one, she's one of the women, one of the McAlberts, as they say, as you call them. Yeah, she's one of the McAlberts. She's married to Chris Albert and her son Colin Albert was inside the house when John O'Keefe was there. And, they, and she's the owner of the dog. No, she's not. That's that's Brian. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I get these Alberts confused. I know it's a big <laughs> incestuous town, but so basically, um, Julie Albert in another text message said that she wanted to buy Michael Proctor a gift because of how, as a thank you for his investigation on this case, an investigation that intentionally left her son excluded her son Colin, who was there the entire time, who was never questioned, and she offered to buy him a gift. And instead of saying, that's improper, I'm a Massachusetts State Police detective, he said, buy one for Elizabeth, his wife, instead. That's what he said. He and put that in writing. He put home. that in writing. He put that in the text message. In the text message, they both did. And it just shows that the feds have all this stuff. This is information that Karen Reed's defense team couldn't get because of Rule 17 motions uh, that were denied and, by Auntie Bev. And, and now, but now the feds and, have just grand power and, to and, get whatever the heck they want. And wait, and and you know. This, this was all introduced in open court. This is all public information. Now, did the district attorney, uh, the assistant district attorney, Lally, did he deny any of these uh, allegations, these bombshells that the, the feds had turned over to the DA and to the, to the defense? Did he deny any of it? Not once. Instead, he jumped on, he basically got up on there and talked about how bad Turtle Boy is. That the, uh, well, the defense is bad because Karen Reed called uh, and, and Turtle Boy had phone conversations. We went on his phone. They had phone. Oh, no, not phone conversations between a journalist and the subject is reporting. The attorneys talked to him on the phone, too. Yeah. So it's like that. That's what they talked about instead of even addressing the elephant in the room that everybody's jaws were dropping over. That oh, they also confirmed that the 227 Google search, which we that search for how long to die in cold that Jennifer McCabe made, yeah, which we all knew she made all along, right? But we that has now been confirmed by an FBI expert, by a, a forensic uh, IT by specialist. A, yeah, so they, yeah. yeah, and and they so they can't deny it. like before they said, well, that's just the. the that's the defense. They paid off some guy who doesn't know what he's talking about, and that's not legitimate. Well, now an independent FBI expert has looked into it. They confirmed the same thing that we all knew to happen. That she searched that at 2:27 a.m. Howard, you know, when I was in when I was in the can, I uh, I was there with Brian Walsh. Right. <laughs> he actually wrote him the guy who um yeah who, yeah who who murdered and yeah. chopped up his allegedly chopped up his wife, and they've never found the body parts. But go ahead, yeah. Right. And Michael Proctor's the lead investigator in that case too. And what got Brian Walsh in there? All his Google, Google searches. searches, right? So I slipped a note under his door, and I said, hey, I'm a journalist. So I want to ask you some questions if you're out for it. I said, are you aware that the same detective in your case who used all these Google searches to put you in here also is now denying the existence of Google searches in this other case in order to protect the <laughs> job of the tape? His lawyer wouldn't let me talk to him, but it's interesting. It's interesting. I've never heard of police before saying Google searches. Oh, that's not real, except in this case when it protects powerful people. But now we know that the FBI, independent of all of this, has determined that that did in fact happen, that he was never hit by a car, that, that the Alberts and the Proctors were good friends for a long time, that they well, knew each other. And but but yet the DA... The ADA, just act like this never happened. Turtle Boy, isn't the DA saying that they have reports from the so-called state police lab sh saying that uh, that O'Keefe's uh, DNA is on the uh, these these parts of the uh, tail light from the Karen Reed's SUV? How is that possible then? Sure. I, I mean, he lived there, didn't he? Yeah. What? How, how is it? Like they, they lived in the same house. I don't know. It's like how I don't trust any of these. Did you know they also found microscopic tail lights? on his clothing. Well, now we know he was never hit by a car. So how did microscopic 
family get on his clothes. And that's not just planting evidence. That's like smashing it to smithereens <laughs> and putting it in his clothing. That's diabolical. So these people are capable of anything. I don't believe a word they say about anything at this point. You know, I just thought of something else that, you know, if, if this case comes down the way it's, it seems to have come be coming down in court today, what about all of other Proctor's other investigations and all the other state police detectives who worked on cases? They're going to, they're going to be their Their testimony is going to be impeached on every case they're involved in. That's a great point. How can any of these detectives ever take the stand in the case again? They've been caught lying so many times. They're the subject of an FBI investigation and how these same state police who, uh, you know, Buchanan, who is uh, Proctor's boss, yeah. Tully, who is Buchanan's boss. Those are the two that came to my house and put me in handcuffs. Those are the two that made up these charges against me, these bogus charges against me, because I had the audacity to see an injustice. I saw this murder cover-up, and I said, no, 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 we can't be quiet about this. We're going to peacefully protest this. And they called that witness intimidation. And they came to my house, raided my house, took my phone, took my computer, took made it impossible for me to do my job, threw me in the can for 60 days. All of this to try to shut me up because I was getting too close to the truth. And now the truth's coming out. And I'll tell you right now, they, they've accused the con- they've accused Karen Reed's defense team of paying me before. <sighs> well, guess what? It's going to be the Commonwealth who's going to be paying me next. So they better get their checkbook ready because I'm never going to forget what they did to me, ever. But you know damn well uh, Morrissey's not going to quit. He makes 191000 a year. That buys a lot of donuts oh, and crawlers and pizza. Uh, yeah, I don't think he's going to be making that much in the can. You know, uh, I mean, maybe he can get a job there making, uh, you know, he can work in the kitchen or something like that. He'd probably like it. But, I mean, these, these people are criminals for, for what they've done. I mean, they, they, they this is, we, our institutions betrayed us. And now we, we know that. They tried so hard to not only frame an innocent woman, but to, to make me into a criminal. Right. For simply writing about it, for making nine innocent people. We call them the Canton Nine who peacefully protested outside right. of a pizza shop and were charged with with felony witness intimidation. Are you kidding me? I mean, where does this end? They basically silenced the entire public to protect these people who quite clearly, based on the evidence, committed a murder and then covered it up after the fact. All right. Uh, Turtle Boy, you want to stick around for a little while? Okay, great. Want to take a, take some calls? We'll take some. If you want to talk to a Turtle Boy, 844-500-4242. This is the biggest day yet in the trial uh, or the, uh, the the case. Yeah, I don't know if it's even going to go to trial. 844-500-4242. We'll be right back. I'm Howie Carr. All right, let's go back to the replay of the hearing today. When Howie comes back, I'll pop back over there, but we'll listen a little bit of Jackson while we're waiting for um, Howie to come back. Uh, Cause I want to get back. I want to, I want to replay. It's just so good today. So we'll, we'll just paddle through this a little bit and kill some time until um, Howie comes back from his break. All right, here we go. Jackson. And that's like jumping from the frying pan. Let's see. Believe. We're stunned by this. If you need additional time, tell me. Here we go. It would be important to focus your argument again. On my Thank you, Peter, for the membership. The Thanks for becoming a member. Appreciate the support. I am as well. And my, that mindfulness suggests that my comments will be directed to that which is necessary to further the proceedings. Okay. Which means that right ahead. I'll start with the, um, uh, just if anybody don't freak out, we'll go back to how he's on a break right now, but I'll pop back out when, when he comes back up, I'll keep checking on it. Uh, when he goes back live, I will pull that back up. Just killing a little time here. The basic rule of Odell, uh, we start with the postulate that as loud as it goes, the evidence. that's where we start. Any distortion of the evidence during the course of a grand jury proceeding impairs the integrity of the indictment, if there is an indictment, and pursuant to Odell, that requires dismissal. Um, in this particular case, there were myriad examples, which I will, again, I'll edit. I was going to go through several, but I'll just touch on them very quickly. Your, your memo, I have to say, your memo is very thorough and very helpful. To Good. You you Good. Good. And same in yourself. Thank you. Great. Um, the first point I want to want. is the what we believe is the failure to disclose Sergeant Michael Lank's personal lifelong relationship with some of the individuals, specifically the individual Chris Albert. There was a, a comment or a, a, an incident, I should say, that we referred to in our moving papers that dealt with Chris Albert and Sergeant Lank 
years ago. They had a long-standing, years-long relationship. And I'll, I'll, I'll close this loop in just a second, but if you'll allow me, that relationship goes all the way back to 2002 at least. And there was an incident in which Sergeant Lang and Chris Albert had gotten into what can easily be described as a bar fight. Chris Albert had gotten into a bar fight of some sort. Michael Lang walks out of the, the same bar or an adjacent bar. He had been drinking with his buddy Chris. He walks out, stumbles out, announces to the, to the uh, participants in this fight that he was quote unquote deputizing himself and ultimately came to Chris Albert's aid. That was with the specific intent to assist an Albert in getting out of a legal jam all the way back to 2002. The reason I bring that up, and by the way, both of the individuals involved, not Sergeant Lang, both of the other individuals. This has Candace with a three pack special you can use one in your. Or set off. involved were ultimately arrested by Sergeant Lang. That case went to trial, and both of the individuals were found not guilty of assault. And that's after Michael Lang engaged in fisticuffs with at least one of the men to the degree that the Canton police officers had to pull him off of the individual. So this is, this is in your memo, and it also is exhibits C through E. That's right. To your TB reported on that, by the way. All right, Howie Carr is back. We're going to go back to Howie. Here we go. I, I'm going to try. I'll, let's just take some stuff to to uh, okay. before before we go to the bottom. No, he's not back. <laughs> he's talking to his producer. Oh, Howie. All right, we'll just wait here. I don't know, go back and forth nine thousand times. <laughs> Oh. Bay 4965. Right. Every I tell you, operate in a stream. I think I'd be able to do it by now, right? <laughs> All right, waiting for Howie to come back from break. Oh. Right to the calls. What do you think is going to happen at the meeting tonight, though? Uh, the Canton Selectmen are meeting tonight, Aiden. Oh, there'll be always be fireworks. I'm sure Rita Lombardi and crew will be down there trying to hold them accountable. Uh, but they got an election coming up, Howie, in a couple of weeks. They're trying to unseat two of the uh, members there that kind of go along with the status quo. So, Yeah, Conley's one, right? Conley? Yeah. No, okay, he's up for re-election next year. It's oh, next year. and Lochran. Okay. Yeah. Let's take some calls here quickly. Uh, Brian, you're next with Howie Carr and Turtle Boy. Go ahead, Brian. Aiden, how are you, sir? Sorry, I dropped um, Turtle Boy. I'll get him back. Are. Oh, we lost him. Um, we just lost him, uh, Brian. We're going to have to wait a second here to get him on. Hold, hold on. You know, so a texter just mentioned Annie Ducan. Remember Annie Ducan? She was the one who uh, the, the the state police. She was a, she worked for the Department of Public Health, but she had a lot of the, uh, state police investigations. She was fabricating evidence. And then there was one in Western Mass. Sonia Farrak was doing the same thing. Turtle Boy, aren't you getting uh, Annie Dukan, Sonia Farak vibes out of all these uh, it, these uh, amazing discoveries that the state police lab is making? Yeah, anything these guys touch, this question, that that includes Proctor, Buchanan, uh, Tully, any of them, because it's not just it's not just Proctor; it's an institutional problem. Any other line of work, like the good people. They, 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 they don't accept the bad people being corrupt. Like I was a teacher. If there was like some other teacher diddling kids, you best believe that the other teachers aren't going to, you know, go along with that and support them. But in policing, it seems like, you know, you have some obviously corrupt cop and then the, his bosses just go along with it and they don't do a, a goddamn yeah. thing about it. Yeah. Brian, go back. You're, you're with uh, Turtle Boy again. Go ahead, Brian. All right. How you doing, sir? Uh, real quick, I, I had a friend of mine. Uh, the morning this happened, uh, worked at that hospital, and uh, they told me some information. I'm, I'm well versed in the field. Uh, that right from the jump, uh, that person was a little suspicious as to what was going on. I couldn't wait. I tried to get some information, um, and then once Turtle Boy got on the scene, 
with his reporting, it, you know, I was looking forward to it. it was a matter of time until things broke the way they did. Uh, you do an excellent reporting. Uh, congratulations to you, and, and it's not over yet. Um, but if you look around the state, you know, you know, we've seen it in Fall River. Uh, Jason Correa and, and that crew and, and all that with policing. Um, it's unfortunately our institutions, um, they're, they're cracked with individuals who shouldn't be in positions that they are in. Hey, Turtle Boy, look the, look at Rachel Rollins just got a job for with uh, working with returning citizens. Are you a returning citizen? <laughs> <laughs> oh, she's still alive. No one's heard from her since then. Now she like she doesn't go on Twitter. I, I'm glad she's alive. Was worried about her there for a minute, but uh, it's kind of funny how in this case that their their defense they tried to throw Rachel Rollins under the bus and say, "Oh, uh, this is all Rachel Rollins doing. She doesn't like me because she called me a racist." It's like she calls everyone a racist. <laughs> yeah, you're not you're not special, Morrissey. And by the way, she's not leading the investigation either. Josh Levy is. So that one went out the door real quick. Yeah. Do, can you stick around for another one more segment? Sure. Okay, that's great because we have full we'll full lines. People want to talk. 844-500-4242, 844-500-4242. This is a it's 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 a big it's a big night. Where can people go to uh, donate money to your defense fund, uh, Turtle Boy, before you become a millionaire at the at the expense of the uh, yeah, Commonwealth? You can just search for Turtle Boy on Go Send Go. It's pinned to the top of my Twitter account at Doctor Turtle Boy D O C T O R Turtle Boy because if Jill Biden is the doctor, then so am I. And uh, he's he just put up his uh, his his account of what happened today in court, tbdailynews.com, and it's a it's a uh, very <clears throat> complete account. We'll be back with Turtle Boy in just a moment. I'm Howie Carr. All right, we'll go back to Jackson, then we'll go back to Howie when he comes back. Thank you all for being here with me today. I appreciate it. We're just uh, killing a little bit of time till uh, the Canton community. Uh, Canton Select Board meeting starts. All right, let's go back to Jackson. We'll listen to a little, 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 little bit of this before uh, how he comes back. And the reason this comes to a head and the, the, the conflict of interest comes to a head is because Michael Lang ultimately was the first person to walk into Brian Albert's house. During the course of the grand jury, nobody elicited information from Michael Lang that he had a close personal relationship with the Alberts, that he had in years past come to the Albert's aid. And yet he was the first person that came into the house. Even the grand jurors were stunned by this and asked, the specific grand jurors asked Michael Lang and asked the Commonwealth, or through the Commonwealth, as a witness, why didn't Brian Albert ever even come out of the house? And I think we have the answer. And the answer is because the Albert, specifically Brian Albert, was waiting on a friendly. And they got that friendly through Michael Lang. That was withheld from the grand jury. Sergeant Lank is a longtime childhood friend of the Alberts. The Canton Police Department was conflicted off the case because of those personal and familial relationships that the Alberts have with Canton Police Department. And Sergeant Lank has a history of using his position as a police officer to shield the Alberts from criminal liability. That was never brought out. That's the kind of distortion that Odell talks about. Another broad example or a broad category that I want to discuss briefly deals with Trooper Michael Proctor. The Commonwealth held, withheld from the grand jury clear and even more egregious <clears throat> conflicts of interest as they pertain to Michael Proctor. Sergeant Lang Real quick, I just want to read this off. Uh, Michael, thank you so much for the 50 on Cash App. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. And Michael went on to say, hang on one second. I want to read his chat that he had there. I'm just waiting for Howie to come back up. Michael went on to say, should be better at this. So thanks for all the hard, he goes, thanks for all the hard work. Well, thank you, Michael. I appreciate the support. Thank you. Thank you so much. I was aware of this irremediable conflict that Canton Police Department had, which he should have had with the Alberts. So what does he do? He calls in Massachusetts State Police. And who do they send but Michael Proctor? And that's like jumping from the frying pan into the fire. That's the same Michael Proctor who's also years long, close family friends with the Alberts. The Proctors have called the Alberts their quote, second family. And to that point, now we have benefit of some hindsight and that's the federal investigation. We have been saying since September 16th, 2022, 
in lengthy motions that we filed. Suzanne, thank you so much for the 50. I appreciate that. She said, thank you for all that you do and you've done for Aiden and all of us. You've been invaluable. No, you all have been. And I said this earlier on Aiden's stream. And I, I don't want people to lose sight of what's gone on and what's going on. If this was not for Turtle Boy, I would not be here today, you know, kind of helping and, and joining this movement and giving my perspective and my reporting on this. If it was not for him for cracking the, the case here, we wouldn't be here. And I don't want people to lose sight of that. Think how he's coming back. Let me just bring him up. So if he starts talking, I don't miss it. Um, and, and, and you all wouldn't be here. We appreciate all the support. I, I really do. I mean, it it, uh, it it just blows me away of the community that's come together, the Free Karen Reed movement, you know, people taking their days off from work to go down and support in front of the court, people trying to get into court, people taking days off like myself and, and whoever to do these streams. I mean, I took a day off from work today because this is important to me to stream this. And I try to do as much as I can. Um, but it, if it all wasn't for this community, we wouldn't be in this position at all. Um, so it's all, all of you, you support us, you help us. And we're very appreciative of that. Um, I, I say it all the time to my friends, my family, everybody that I come in contact with, I, I can't believe it. You know, some nights here, I'm like over a thousand people in the chat. It's unbelievable. I would have never thought that, but we all have that common interest. And we all have the common interest in this particular case. And we all know that what the Commonwealth is trying to do to Karen Reed is complete bullshit. And this in Karen Reed is factually innocent and everything. I mean, I don't know why and how the trolls can keep going on with this charade and how the Commonwealth can keep going on with this charade. I mean, we the feds have confirmed the feds confirmed a lot of information today. And we heard a lot of new bombs drop today that things that we didn't know about. And I can't wait until we can get our hands on that 50-page memo and, and read it from Jackson and see what other things are in there. Because it's just, that was just the, the tip of the iceberg. There's, there's, there's a lot more. Let's see if Howie's come back. question is brought to you by Balance 7. Stop procrastinating and get your energy back. New Thank customers you. can save 20% and well, get I'm it. not sponsored by that, so I'm going to cut that sponsor out. Uh, Motion says, the GOAT. Thank you, man. You've been here for a very long time, and thank you for the five and the support. I appreciate it. Uh, we'll just wait for Howie to come back. But, you know, going back to my to my uh, my point, uh, hang on, Howie might be back. 1% say inflation is. Oh. Um, you know, going back to my point, I mean, if it. Oh, Howie, you're killing me. Where can people see your own show, Turtle Boy? They can just check out our YouTube channel, Turtle Boy Live. We go live at nine o'clock. Nine o'clock. And I'm sure this is going to be a big record setting night for you. It's uh, it's just yeah, amazing. Did 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 Proctor lie to the to the state grand jury? Do we know that, or or did he leave it to somebody else to say he didn't know the the Alberts who he was investigating? Uh, I'm not sure if uh, no, I, I, I'm not sure if he if he was asked that by the state grand jury or if, because the the district attorney's office is the one that gets to control the questioning. So why would they even think to bring that up at a, at a state grand yeah. jury? But I'm yeah. just looking at your story. You say Proctor confirmed to a to the federal grand jury that he had indeed lied about his closeness with the Alberts. That's correct. Yeah, I'm not sure where who he lied to about that, but yeah, yeah I, I guess it would have to be the state grand jury he lied to. So, um, you know, because they confronted him with text messages. Like they have all their phones. They clear. I mean, that's one thing we learned today. They have all their phones. D.A. Morrissey's office told Brian Albert a Boston police officer and Brian Higgins, an ATF agent to destroy their phone. That's another thing we're overlooking. To yeah. Destroy, their, destroy phone. their phones. I mean, usually they usually yeah. even in a civil investigation, they say preserve the records. That's the first thing they say. And that's a civil case. This is a good, this is a murder case. Destroy it. Destroy it. The DA's office is ordering people to do this. Get rid of evidence. Get rid of your phones. It's just this could be the biggest story in the country when it goes down, Howie. The question is, will you know? It's it, this could, this investigation could go on for months or years. The question is, will Karen Reed go to trial in the meantime? We, I certainly hope not. What's your What's your thought, though? You think uh, uh, Judge Auntie Bev, as you call her, is going to throw it out? <laughs> 
50-50 at this point. Mm. Before, I thought she never would, but after today, I don't see how it's going to be extremely hard for yeah. not to throw this Because the feds are involved. What, what are the, uh, what the, what, I mean, you can't quote them directly, but what are you, what's your feeling about what the lawyers think, Yannetti and Jackson? I mean, based on their appearances today, they seem extremely happy, okay. extremely confident, as they should be, um, because the facts are on their side, and it's just only a matter of time until uh, this goes down. Seamus, you're next with Howie Carr and Turtle Boy. Go ahead, Seamus. Turtle Boy, could you talk a little bit more about the 2.22 a.m. phone yeah. call when everyone was supposed to be sleeping? And yeah. is that contrary, in contrary to grand jury testimony? That's correct. Yeah, both uh, Brian Albert uh, said that he was sleeping by 2.22, and I believe Brian Higgins did the same. Yet there is a phone call between them at 2.22. That's another thing we learned today. And how would they know that there's a phone call between them? Then it means they have their phone. They have their it phone. They've gone through their phone records. They have everything that Karen Reese's defense team couldn't get their hands on. They have all sorts of communications. They know everything. They, they know what happened. And, uh, you know, they're not going to let uh, – I think that they, by providing this evidence, they assumed that they're not going to allow this to go to trial. But ultimately, again, it's up to Auntie Bev. Well, I mean, theoretically, couldn't uh, Morrissey – Morrissey pulled a plug on it, the DA? He's not going to. Yeah. yeah. No. Well, that's not going to happen. He could also, yeah. like, not go for, you know, third helping of gravy. <laughs> <laughs> I, that's I, I like the, uh, the, the his, his uh, prosecutor said that the federal materials that were turned over were largely consistent with what they had. <laughs> yeah. I mean, what, whatever happened to guilty beyond reasonable doubt, right. largely consistent means it's the case is gone, doesn't it? Yeah, he said ninety to nine. He said ninety to ninety-five percent, <laughs> which means that five to ten percent of their investigation is completely wrong. And then what? What part was that? You know, <laughs> the, the lying here. It's just bizarre how they're just going down with the ship. It's strange. Sally, you're next with Howie Carr and Turtle Boy. Go ahead, Sally. Aiden, love your show. Um, I'm a big fan. I have a question. Has anybody come up with the missing sneaker in the belt? Or did they use that to drag the body out into the lawn? Well, the the, the sneaker was, that was was not there at six o'clock when the can police got there. They found him with one. This is O'Keefe's. This is O'Keefe, the dead cop, right? That's correct. Yeah. When the can police got there at six o'clock in the morning, his body was there. He only had one shoe on. The other shoe was MIA. Luckily, after a foot of snow fell, fell down, and and the state police did a second search. They found the shoe because shoes appear after snow starts falling, apparently, in Canton. So, you know, I don't know where that shoe was before, but they, luckily they found it. The sec- I guess the Canton police are just blind, and they didn't see a size 12 shoe or whatever the heck you wore. As for the belt, I'm not entirely sure. Uh, but my, my belief is that that Ford Edge was parked right there. Uh, I think that they, that they took his body out of the basement. They have, like, a little uh, thing in the back to get out of the Going to the backyard, they went over to the fence, right out. If if you parked the Ford Edge where it was seen by Lucky Locker, and it would perfectly block the line of vision, and you could just drag his body right there and go back inside the house. Lucky is the uh, tow truck driver. They did, did an interview for what a year, or a year and a half. Tell people about the two minute gap on the uh, Canton Public Library uh, surveillance camera. They, people were very interested in that. We talked about it in the first hour. Yeah, so when, when Karen Reed would have gone from 34 Fairview Road back to John O'Keefe's house, she would have gone through the center of town, and the library's right there, and the library has surveillance video. And so obviously if, if she had just hit him and her taillight was cracked or broken or shattered or whatever, then that surveillance camera would have her taillight, right? In, in right. Peace. Well, coincidentally, that you know the Canton Library video was working all night, except there's a two-minute gap that appears – 1237 and 1239 at the exact time Darn. Karen Reed would have gone through. And who handled that evidence? Who did? Who I I, inter- I went into Canton Town Hall and I interviewed the IT director. And who did he hand all of that video to? Michael Proctor. And then Michael Proctor put it onto a CD. And two minutes were missing. The exact two minutes when Karen Reed drove by. Because if they want to get her, they could get her. If her taillight's broken at 1237. She's guilty. But right. Coincidentally, it's just gone. It's gone. Yeah, that's a tough break for the prosecution. They lost that uh, smoke and gun evidence. Yeah, seriously, <laughs> seriously. I mean, Howie, I went, I went and knocked on doors on that street, like a real reporter. I knocked on doors every time I saw a ring camera, and I asked the people that live there, 
did the state police ever ask come by and ask for video? Because you know, nope. Reed right. come by on a midnight ride home, and every one of them told me no. The state police never asked for any ring video. It's like the, they everything they normally would have done in an investigation, they didn't do in this one. It's you're a. This is this is uh, this is something I never thought you'd. I I thought you would prevail, but I didn't think you'd prevail in these in this way. I mean, it's th- this is turning into a route, Turtle Boy. I guess they they think it happened, well, well, but it it's looking very good for you right now. At Karen they're Reed. They're trying to send me back on Thursday, Howard. They're trying to send me back to the can on Thursday, uh, for the for a violation of the order. And uh, was that when you went into the courtroom and that woman was there in the courtroom? Yes, yeah, she showed up holding the order with. Came with the McAlbert. She's never been to one before. I was evicted. I left. I went to where a cop told me to go across the street at the Registry of Deeds, and I stood there. I didn't see her again. But apparently, they're alleging now they're making up another lie that I yelled at her on a way up. They, and we can prove that it didn't happen. But these people just won't stop. They're vicious. They put innocent people in jail when you challenge them. And uh, you know, it's scary. It's scary because they have it is. Guns. So, so they you're gonna you're back in court on on uh, on Thursday. Yourself as a defendant. Yep, and as a defendant. Good Lord. Rambo, you're next with Howie Carr and Turtle Boy. Go ahead, Rambo. Hey, uh, congratulations there, Turtle Boy, and hey, Howie. Hi. Hey, uh, yes, it's a travesty of a mockery of a sham, is what it is. It's, and and, and Turtle Boy, you, you got it right with the uh, with the hate notes left, uh, alleged notes on the uh, Westfield State student's door that time you cracked that case. Oh, I remember that you're, years you're ago. Good. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Oh yeah. Thank you. Yeah, that's all good. Come a long way since then. Come a long way. <laughs> <laughs> Thank, State thanks. State crimes at Westfield State to murders in Norfolk County. <laughs> thanks, Rambo. Kelly, you're next with Howie Carr and Turtle Boy. Go ahead, Kelly. Hi, Howie. Hi, Aiden. Um, thanks Hi, for John. taking my call. Um, just real quick. Um, first, I'd like to thank Aiden for all he has really brought to this case. Um, Aiden, you, I think, should be very proud of yourself for all you've done for Karen, her family. Um, you've just, you've done an incredible job. So congratulations. And then well, thank you. Um, I would like, I'd like to ask you um, the thoughts on the tail light. Um, I thought it was really interesting, the commentary about the car did not he was not hit by a car, right? In so right, many words. Right. So tail light all over the scene. I mean, right. we're talking yeah. definitely planted, right? I mean, I mean, right. You know, if they even found it there, like they were undocumented trips. For all we know, Michael Proctor could have just entered it into evidence whenever he wanted it. You know, they kept finding it every time he went there. He'd find more tail light. He's the tail light whisperer. <laughs> but he, he missed it the last time. He kept finding more tail light. And again. That's that's the really diabolical part about the, the taillight. Now that we know the fact that he was not hit by a car, how did all that taillight get found? That shows that this was a, not just poor police work, but an intentional frame job. And who did that and who orchestrated it and, and when did it happen? Did they even plant it there or did they just enter it into evidence? They don't even have to plant it. They can just enter it into evidence and say they found it there. It's undocumented. Why? why I've never understood why did they want to frame Karen Reed for this? Easy way out. Oh, she's the only, who else are they going to frame? Yeah, she's That's the only one. She's the only one who's not a townie. Is that what you're saying? Basically, well, what yeah, it boils she down to, know right? Them that well, yeah, she, they probably just didn't like her. Maybe she's a little bit too uppity. She's a you know an adjunct professor and works at Fidelity. I mean, these people are pretty <clears> common. <throat> some of these folks, some of these Chris Alberts of the world. If you meet these guys, they they, they don't like the Karen Reed types. They're they're too confident and they're and they're too educated. They don't like them. So, yep. and I just think that like. Meatheads. Look at these pictures of the Albert family. Like it's a huge family. They are not going to let their family get destroyed over someone like Karen Reed when she can just take the fall for them. Good Lord. Marshall, you're next with Howie Carr and Turtle Boy. Go ahead, Marshall. But Karen was smarter. Good. Karen was smarter. And she fought this. How you doing, uh, and look Andy? what's happening well, now. I'm good. Case, uh, from the... Can you hear me? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Quickly. Um, so I've been following this case with you, Aiden, from the beginning. I knew, like, the day you reported on it, I knew it was going to be, like, one of the biggest cases in history. Um, and 
you know, you've just done an amazing job. I started watching your reporting because of how accurate you are uh, on a, on another um, situation. And your reporting, it's just, it's, it's very, it's, it's very good. And um, my question is this, you know, for all the Turtle Riders and Karen Reed supporters uh, on Twitter, where we have all these uh, minions for the prosecution, like Jennifer Coffin-Daffer and Grant Smith-Ellis, and uh, Kevin from Yellow Cottage Tales. Oh, and names though. Yeah, how, uh, you you want to know how to fight them? Is that it, Marshall? Well, are you like because they keep putting out all this, um, you know, misinformation, all these lies. They keep putting you and 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 all the supporters. Are you going to end up suing a, them? Uh, I mean, Kofin Dafer, I'm thinking about. She's like literally making things up about me that are just completely untrue, saying that I threatened her, that I sent. She's a supposed. Her. She's, she's an FBI, ex FBI agent. Right, yeah. or is that and her? her she's posted, yeah. Howie, she's posted things that I'm like a drug addict. That I'm. And like, keep in uh, mind that I uh, sent her death threats to her. Her children. team it's completely made up. The FBI you know, confirmed all of this information today in court. Block function on Twitter. It's a cesspool on there. You know that's the beauty of it. You get to decide who you listen to and who you don't. Right. But you know, just watch. It's just hilarious. They're idiots. Ninety-nine percent of the people who look at this feel the same way that we do. Twitter is not real life. It's just a bunch of of minions of fake Ratchet. accounts that are just spreading misinformation and they're going down with the ship and they're, they're going to look real dumb when uh, these people get led away in handcuffs. Turtle boy, congratulations. This is a big victory for you. Good luck on Thursday. And, uh, and people can see you tonight on your, uh, uh, on your rumble channel. Uh, at, at what is the, what is it? Turtle boy? Yep. Turtle boy uh, live. You search for it on rumble or on YouTube and we'll be on there at night. And uh, if you want to, if you want to read up on the case, there's a really good uh, account of what happened today. Go to tbdailynews.com. And where do people go if they want to contribute money, Turtle Boy? Uh, you just go to the Turtle Boy. You search for Turtle Boy on Give Send Go. It's pinned to the top of my Twitter account at Dodgy Turtle Boy. Okay, great. Congratulations. And do you want to say anything to the Canton Board of Selectmen tonight? <laughs> you guys are going down. Rita Lombardi and Trisha are about to unseat two of you. And then we're going to take In over Jen. the other three seats. In Jen. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Turtle Boy. Congratulations. I'm Howie Carr. Good stuff. All right. We'll pop back into Jackson. And then we got about another 10 minutes. I got to use the bathroom real quick. Uh, we'll, I'm going to pull this up. We'll keep playing through this until the select board meeting starts. And then we'll we'll go. Listen, I appreciate everybody being here. Uh, close to about 800 people between Twitter and YouTube and Facebook uh, on the platform tonight. Thank you so much for supporting LTL. Uh, this has been uh, really great, you know, really, really great. And, and again, this channel would not go with all of you. I appreciate all the donations that have come in um, and everybody, you know, wanted to be part of this community, the LTL community. And uh, it's been such a great ride so far. And again, you know, we can't, we can't keep out of the equation. Uh, if it was not for Turtle Boy, we wouldn't all be here. Uh, I wouldn't be here in the mix with the Free Karen Reed movement. So I want to say thank you to him. And again, it was such an honor to be over there today streaming. And almost 6,000 people watching, over 6,000 people watching his stream today. So really, really good stuff. Um, and, and I do uh, appreciate that. All right, I'm going to play this. I'm going to step off for a second and use the restroom. But we'll be back. Um, I'll be right back. And then we'll get to the Canton Select Board meeting in, in about 10 minutes. All right, here we go. And filed with the Commonwealth. There is a conflict. You're not investigating the conflict. That conflict was never described to the grand jurors. And we've been rebuffed at every single turn. Newly uncovered text messages, but from the feds, revealed that on January 19th, 2022, think about that date, that's 10 days before the incident. January 19th, 2022, Michael Proctor texted his own family members discussing the specifics of having Julie Albert babysit for his toddler child. We should all let that sink in for a second. So, yeah, I understand that. There is a level of closeness that cannot be overstated. Michael Proctor is so connected to the Alberts that he was entrusting them or willing to entrust the Alberts to be caregivers for his toddler child. And it's not lost on anybody in this courtroom that for two years, the Commonwealth has been denying it and still denies it in their opposition paperwork. They still say, well, there's nothing to see here. It's Michael Proctor's sister who really is friends with Julie Albert. And that, you know, that's not a big deal. Everybody looked the other way. As a matter of fact, Ms. McLaughlin wrote the following in her opposition. 
Trooper Proctor's supposed close and personal relationship with the Alberts is, quote, entirely unfounded and a desperate creation of the defense, a desperate creation of ours. We, she says we created this. But now we have the benefit of the federal investigation. And the Commonwealth finds itself in that very unenviable position of having to eat some very distasteful words. Because we didn't create anything. And there's more. On February 1st, 2022, three days after John O'Keefe was killed, there was another text message. And this one, Michael Proctor's sister texts Michael Proctor very specifically and writes the following, quote, just saw Julie. And Julie said, when all this is over, she wants to give you, Michael Proctor, a thank you gift. Michael Proctor didn't respond with, that's inappropriate. These are witnesses. These are potential suspects. Uh, please tell her, don't ever do that again. Don't ever suggest an exchange of gifts again. That would be inappropriate. I'm going to go write a report. I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Lally. And Mr. Lally is going to turn that information over to the defense and to the court. No, that's what he should have done. What he did do is he responded, get Elizabeth one, his wife. In other words, get the gift from my wife. It'll be a little less obvious. So now we have the lead investigator from Mass Massachusetts State Police literally discussing the exchange of gifts between the Albert family on the one hand and the Proctor family on the other hand as a thank you, their words, for helping the Alberts out of a jam. And if you looked up quid pro quo in the dictionary, you would find this set of text messages. Two years later to the day, on February 1st, 2024, now let's fast forward two years later, now Michael Proctor finds himself on the witness stand in front of a federal grand jury, which we just found out about. That grand jury was tasked with a singular commission, and that was investigating crimes of public corruption by law enforcement in relation to this case. And during that testimony, he's confronted <coughs> with these and, and myriad other examples of evidence of his close ties to the Albert family. And he admitted to an AUSA under very intense questioning that not only does he know the Alberts and does he socialize with them, does he drink with them, does he go to pool parties with them, but he told his partner, Yuri Buknik, all of this before Yuri Buknik testified at the grand jury and before he and Buknik actually interviewed Chris Albert. Why does that mean something? Why does that mean something to the court and to this argument? Because when Yuri Buknik testified before the state court grand jury, he testified that, quote, following formal introductions, end quote, Julie Albert and Chris Albert provided their phone numbers. Following formal introductions. That was a clear deceit on the grand jurors. Yuri Buknik knew as did Michael Proctor. They didn't need formal introductions. Michael Proctor was considering having Julie Albert babysit his kid 10 days ago. Actually, at that time, 13 days ago. That left the, the grand jury with the intentional false in, uh, impression that these people literally do not know. Wait, other. was there a gasp in the court right there? I want to go back and listen to that. I think there was a like a collective gasp from the galley. Let's listen. Clear deceit on the grand jurors. Yuri Buknik knew, as did Michael Proctor, they didn't need formal introductions. Michael Proctor was considering having Julie Albert babysit his kid 10 days ago. Actually, at that time, 13 days ago. That left the, the grand jury with the intentional false in, uh, impression that these people literally do not know each other. They've never been in contact. They're complete strangers. That was a lie. That was a concerted effort to hide that relationship and to hide the conflict of interest. And the grand jurors were fooled. They were left with the impression, Michael Proctor, Yuri Buknik, they don't know these folks. They're completely neutral, independent investigators, and nothing could be further from the truth. And the revelation of this evidence culminated in front of that same grand jury on February 1st, 1st 2024. Under additional intense questioning by the assistant United States attorney, Proctor was caught in his own web of deceit and testified as follows, quote, so uh, this is the AUSA talking or asking the question. So obviously we're asking questions about your relationship with Julie Albert, with Chris Albert, and with Colin Albert. Do you understand that? Answer, yes, sir. Question, and you're saying that you're minimizing, quote, minimizing your relationship to the grand jury, correct? Answer, 
Yes. He finally, under the scrutiny of a federal grand jury, admitted that he had been lying about his relationship to the Alberts, which means he lied to the grand jury, which means the evidence was distorted in front of the grand jury. And okay. that is the burden that Odell requires. All right, so your time is up, which includes me interjecting. Do you want five more minutes? If I could. If I Please. I'd, I'd like you to say that of course we want five more minutes. <laughs> Yes, please. I want to hear five more minutes of this. Thank you, Auntie Bev. If you're just joining in, I just saw a big flux of people come in. We're just waiting for the Canton Select Board meeting to start. That'll start in about three minutes or so. Uh, we're just going back and replaying from uh, the hearing today, the Karen Reed hearing today. Hopefully, we can get in the, the five minutes before uh, the Select Board meeting starts. Questions I asked as well. All right, I know you're reciting the evidence um, that I've read. Right, so I'll, I'll give you five more minutes. Go Thank ahead. you. I want to shift gears to a uh, another example or another series of examples of Ooh. evidence that was distorted before the grand jury, um, and that deals with the use of or the the um, insinuation of Kevin Albert, yet another Albert, at the behest of Michael Proctor. Kevin Albert is a sworn Canton. Okay, here's the thing. I'm gonna make this, and I don't why I don't know why I have to say this every single stream. Uh, I have no control over the audio and the video. I don't know why. It's it's up all the way. It's up all the way. I have no control over it. I say this every single stream. I, I don't know what else to tell everybody. Turn your volume up. I don't know what to tell you. I have 50% of the crowd that says everything sounds great. And then I have 50% of the crowd that keeps saying, I can't hear it. I don't know what to tell you. I'm not talking. I have my microphone on mute. It's just the way that it is. I, I, I cannot control the volume. <laughs> I can't control it. I, I If I had an 11 vo uh, button on it, I would do it. Believe me. I'm hearing it fine. <laughs> it sounds fine to me. Uh, but it just, uh, it gets frustrating in the chat. I, ha I, I can't control the volume. It's, if you have an audio problem, take it up with the people that set up the audio in the courtroom. <laughs> it's just, it gets kind of mind numbing after a while. I can't control it. It's just, it is what it is. I don't know what to tell you. Turn your hearing aid up. I don't know. <laughs> it's just, it... <laughs> oh shit, man. Just. I can't do anything about it. If I could, I I would. Believe me. <laughs> Hi. All right, we're just waiting for the select board meeting to start. All right. What's this?
Uh, I'm just waiting for the select board meeting to start. Here we go. Volume is all the way up. Is my microphone lower? That was not me. I had a phone call that I had to take. Oh, this this audio is great. Um, first of all, I'd like to um, uh, Elliot Norman Gray passed away on March 6, 2024. Son of the late Hyman and Irma Francis Jade, beloved husband of Bernice Jade, beloved father of David, Jade of Winter, Mark and his wife Helen of Brockton, and Mark is our plumbing and gas inspector he has been for the last 10 or so years. Um, and Gary and his wife Donna, also of Brockton, and Sarah's grandfather, Jack. And Sam Jade, Ashley, and her husband, Pat Crawford of Brockton, and Terry, and her husband, Eric Cranston of Rhode Island, and great grandfather of Madison, and Adam Crawford of Brockton. That's the first gentleman I'd like to have in the prayers. And uh, the second, unfortunately, is Charles James Jerome Miller, Charlie from Quincy, formerly of Canton, unexpectedly passed away on February 27th, 2024. Um, Charlie was the son of Dean Miller and Ann Miller of Canton. Dean served this town for five years as a member of the Canton Planning Board. Um, and we'll ask you to keep um, um, Charlie survived by his wife, Courtney Miller, his mother and father, as I said, Ann and Dean Miller of Canton, his sister, Maggie Miller, sweet, and her husband, Mike of Old Line, Connecticut, his grandmother, Joan Tripp of Sag Harbor, New York, his aunt, Kim Tripp of New York, and Sarah Tripp of White of Tampa, Florida. And with family and friends who love them, he will be sorely and greatly missed. So I'd ask the uh, board members, ladies and gentlemen, if you can have a moment of silence and memory in honor of both uh, Mark Jade's father and uh, Mr. and Mrs. Miller, their son, uh, Charlie, who passed away. If you could, please. May they rest in peace. Thank you very much. Thank you, <clears throat> Thank you Mr. Carmi. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, first thing on the agenda, Mr. Lawson. Uh, we have the comp competitive procurement guideline approval for Canton Electricity Choice, uh, and we have uh, Tom Birmingham presenting. Good evening, Thank you. Tom. Good evening, Mr. Chair and select board members. Thank you for having me here tonight. My name is Tom Birmingham, and I am chair of Canton's Energy Advisory Committee. I am joined tonight by Paul Gromer from Mass Power Choice who is helping Canton navigate our Canton Electricity Choice journey. Thank you for being here, Paul. As you know, I will be asking you to approve tonight an important set of guidelines that, if approved, will be used to inform whether the town administrator signs a competitive electricity supply contract as early as tomorrow. This is a critical step in delivering Canton's Electricity Choice program, which was first approved by the town voters at the 2022 annual town meeting. <clears throat> As you may recall, the last time I presented before the select board in February and since then, there have been a number of good questions raised, especially around how customers get automatically enrolled and whether they can choose not to participate. Believe me, I've been in the energy business for 30 years and it's not easy to get our arms around this concept. So, Mr. Chair, if I may, I'll take a few minutes to address some of the questions that we've been hearing and try to make sure everyone is comfortable with tonight's vote and what that means going forward. Thank you. Canton Electricity Choice is like a bulk buying club where the town negotiates a single favorable contract to supply electricity to our residents and businesses over some fixed period like two years, 24 months. This provides several benefits, including price stability, cleaner electricity, and hopefully lower prices over the term of the contract compared to Eversource's basic service rate that we would not otherwise be able to uh, do on our own. While program savings cannot be guaranteed because Eversource's basic service rate fluctuates every six months for residential customers, History shows this program has saved a lot of money for mass residents and businesses over time. 
Um, there are approximately 167 other towns and cities in Massachusetts that participate in this program already. Eversource will remain our local electric distribution company. This was all made possible back in 1997 when the mass law changed and allowed competition in the supply of electricity. Eversource does a fine job and the wires, meters, and local infrastructure will still be managed by them. Just to give a quick overview of where we are in the program, I'd like to turn <coughs> this slide so the audience can see. At this point in time, for the sake of brevity, where, where that red arrow is, we're in the fourth step of a six-step process, and we're just about, with tonight's approval, assuming it's approved, that we'll be able to enter a procurement contract as I said, as early as tomorrow. If that contract is signed into tomorrow, based on the guidelines that I'm asking you to approve tonight, then we would go into the fifth step, which is a public notification and education process. And then finally, we would launch the program. If the contract is signed tomorrow, then we would expect the program to begin in uh, June of 2024. If it's not signed tomorrow, the next possible date to do this would be uh, as soon as October of 2024, and we would begin that process in August. So that's where we are tonight. Um, let me just uh, review. So the competitive procurement process guidelines that you're being asked to vote on have five components to them. There's pricing goals, there's renewable energy content, there's contract duration, supplier credentials, and market conditions, and something called an operational adder. These five elements set in, in these guidelines provide the town administrator with the guardrails that he will need to make a decision on whether to go or not go forward with a supply procurement contract. So the details of these um, guidelines is provided to you pri pr previously to tonight, and hopefully you've had a chance to review them. Uh, if not, I'm happy to take any questions that you may have on that. Um, but if I may just continue. <coughs> yes, please. For the audience particularly, it's important to understand this program provides four different options, all of which are voluntary. Option one is called the default or also named the standard green option. Option two is something called opt up or the Canton plus green. Option three is the opt down called the Canton basic option. And then finally, there's an opt out option. So anybody that does not want to participate in these options one, two, or three has the right with no, no penalties and no fees to opt out and go stay with uh, ever sources basic service rate. It may help if I show an illustration of this on the next slide. Going left to right, the description of what the program elements are under Canton Electricity Choice. The second column is Eversource Basic Service. That's the def that's the everybody currently is on, most everybody is on Eversource's basic rate. Canton Basic is the opt-down option. Canton Standard Green is the default. And Canton plus green is the opt up option. The example to help illustrate the pricing, this is not what we expect to see tomorrow necessarily. This is just an example. But today, roughly, Eversource's basic service rate is around 17 cents per kilowatt hour. What we would, we're advocating for with this program, the guidelines establish this, is that if the Canton basic rate is not equal to or less than the Eversource rate, then this program is, we would not recommend uh, town administrator signing that. We would wait for another opportunity to see how the prices change. What we hope to see is that there's a price benefit of signing up for this, or being automatically enrolled into the Canton Standard Green option. What that does is provides, as in this example, a price benefit, and it also increases the amount of renewable electricity that customers would be paying for up to 25% more than what the current level is being provided by Eversource. Finally, Canton Plus Green is the um, highest green option. 
In this example, we're showing that it would be comparable at 17 cents a kilowatt hour to Eversource basic current basic service rate at 17 cents per kilowatt hour. That means for the same price, you get to increase your renewable energy content by approximately 50% more than your um, basic service option would provide you. So those are, that's a lot to cover in a couple minutes, but hopefully that paints the picture for everybody to see what the options are. If you do not want the default Canton standard green and you wanna opt up to the Canton plus green, you need to make a phone call or go on the website and we have that information available. If you wanna opt down to Canton basic, phone call website. If you wanna opt out back to Eversource basic, you have to, either um, phone call or website are fine, but we'll also be providing um, an opt-out reply card in the mail to every customer on record with, Ever, with Eversource uh, that's eligible. So, excuse me, yeah. Tom, would those cards be in your Eversource bill or mailed separately? Information about the program along with the opt-out card that okay. will come in a separate mailing on its own. Okay, thank you. Um, I did include a picture of it so people can know. When it comes in the package, uh, it will be clearly identified from the town as well. So this is a town-sponsored program. The town seal uh, will be on the envelope so people understand this is legitimate town-sanctioned program. In the package is the sample opt-out reply card. So again, if you're not comfortable, you want to stay with Eversource, you sign that card, you date it, you send it back in, and then your account will remain on Eversource. No change whatsoever. Can you just explain to the people, because a lot of the questions I've been um, asked is, why can't we opt in as opposed to having to opt out? Uh, the law is set up this program to automatically opt in customers uh, that that default service um, that was intended in part to provide the suppliers with enough customers to justify a lower more competitive rate and better terms so the law allows it anticipates this buying club providing enough customers for the supplier to be you know, worth their while and just to clarify that um you have every opportunity to opt out at any given time. You have every opportunity to opt back in at any given time with no penalty. Correct. Any other questions for Mr. Birmingham? Or? Okay, so, <clears throat> Mr. Lockman. Uh, are you done, Tom, or is there? Uh, yeah. I'm so, oh, I'm sorry, uh, did I catch no, you No, no, no. Um, what I put, if we're ready to uh, go through this, um, if you're okay, subject to any questions from the audience, uh, Mr. Lofner and I, I did uh, include some suggested motion language. Mr. Chair, just one question. Tom. Yeah. On the um, duration of the contract, mm -hmm. as a standard 24 months, it's every 24 months this is going to be reviewed for the pricing? We have a choice of how long that term is. Um, we're recommending 24 months at this point based on the current market conditions, price stability, um, and a couple of other reasons. We could do shorter, 12 months, six months, doesn't really make sense because that's kind of no, what the normal change would be. And you can go out as far as, I think you've seen three years or 36 months. Um, but generally at this point, we're thinking 24 months, depending on how all these pricing uh, contracts, uh, supply offers come in tomorrow. And the last thing I wanted to, uh, to mention is on the mailing of the opt out, opt in, is there a phone number that a, person that doesn't have the internet or computer can call and get questions answered directly for those Absolutely. people who don't have it. Phone number, we'll website, them. and uh, address are all gonna be prominently Perfect. included. <clears throat> okay, thank you. One quick question, if I may. I know I, it's very um, hypothetical, but I just wanna ask, what happens if they don't, if the company doesn't get enough, a lot of people, everybody opts out, are they, can they pull the plug on us, no pun intended? <laughs> Great you, you know what I'm saying? My Great question. question. I don't it, think it's going to ever happen, right. but I, I, maybe it has some way you know better than I know. Yeah. 
So um, you're right on both counts. So it never has happened, has but tough. if it did, so say everybody opted out except for Tom, <laughs> the supplier is still committed to honor the price for the term of the contract. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Any questions from the audience? <coughs> please step up to the mic and just identify your please. So please. Um, Ellen Martin. I just have a question regarding other suppliers. If you wanted to opt out, could can you do you have to go back to Eversource or can you go uh, to uh, to another supplier? Uh, you can definitely go to another supplier. There, and there's there is they're in the marketplace now. Mm -hmm. Okay. And there, there are some people in Canton Slide currently on. already using another supplier yeah. today. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, you, you can stay right where you are, no problem. Okay. I, I just didn't know because the rates change so often. That's why I was curious. Okay. Yeah, one of the benefits of this program is um, it'll give you a longer term than what you may be used to seeing under your current supply arrangement. So, Tom, if I'm enrolled in a um, green energy provider now, will they be automatically notified I'm going into the Canton Choice? Will, I don't have to do anything, or do I have to get out of that program? Yeah, so um, so if you're with a competitive supplier now, yeah. two, two things. One is you're not part of the automatic enrollment pool, so you won't get automatically changed. You'll just stay where you are. But if you wanted to join the program, you can just call the program. You don't need to tell the other supplier that you want to leave. It's a good practice to do so, though, because sometimes those contracts have a termination penalty if you do leave. Right. The town's program will not, but sometimes those third-party programs do, so it would be wise to check with them. But technically, you don't. You could just contact the town and get enrolled in the town program. Okay. Thank you. And just to, uh, what I had asked the last time, uh, just to, to restate it, that if your the power goes out, Eversource still handles the outages and things of that nature. Everything is basically business as is. Like if uh, there's a windstorm, which we're very familiar with, so yes. they'd, um, if they'd come and fix the poles or the tree with, and then the, that would be the same, correct? Okay, I just wanna make sure that's public because that was a, some concerns, who do I call? My lights go out. <clears throat> right. Exactly, Eversource, just like before. Exactly, thank you. It's a win-win situation, pretty much. Yep. Great, great. So do we need a, do we have a motion, Mr. Yep. Hawkwood? So I have it from the presentation. So um, I make a motion that the select board approve the competitive procurement process guidelines as presented by the chair of the CEAC. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any other questions or comments? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye, Aye zero. Excellent. <laughs> Congratulations. Congrats. Mr. Chair, if I may, um, thank you very much. Uh, just on a positive note, uh, I'd like to thank Chair Theodore and the Select Board Member Lawfern for your leadership and behind the scenes support on this. I much appreciate it. Town Administrator Duty, uh, I know we got some work ahead of us, but thank you for your steady guidance, responsiveness, and can do attitude. Uh, we have a small but mighty committee, the CEAC committee members, Christine Smith, Emily Torres Cullinan, and Carl Engelberg. Thank you for all your time and effort on this. Uh, I know it was a lot of meetings to get us to this point. A uh, quick shout out to Jen Wexler and her merry band of volunteers from the Canton <laughs> residents for a sustainable, equitable future. You lit the fire and we got it going. And finally, thank you, Paul, and your team for all you're doing for us. Appreciate it. Thank you. And the thank select board thanks you also. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Nice job. Thanks, sir. <laughs> Thank you, Tom. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Thank you. Uh, next on the agenda, Mr. Larkin. Next, Mr. Chair, we have a discussion on the MBTA community zoning pre-adoption review. Uh, and I will defer to our town planner and uh, the chair of the planning board. Thank you, Mr. Chair, members of the select board. We're here tonight to briefly update the board on the general progress and status of the town of Canton's proposed zoning article uh, for achieving compliance with section 3A MBTA community zoning law. 
we hosted two public forums. One was in the evening at the library in December, and then we had one during the day uh, right here in the Sala meeting room in January. The planning board has also held two public hearings at each of their uh, last two meetings. As you know, the working group appointed by the select board has been working diligently for over a year at developing, tweaking, and continuously improving the specifics of the zoning. We've shopped around some different map boundaries, dimensional limitations, and just test fitting different scenarios, always trying to find what's best for Canton. We've solicited feedback from the public, from the planning board, the affordable housing trust, the economic development committee, the master plan committee, and the sustainability and climate action plan committee. It's truly been a team effort. So one thing we wanna talk about tonight is pre-adoption feedback. Now, the state offers something called pre-adoption feedback, and what that is, is they will look at our proposed zoning ahead of going to town meeting, because and this is a good thing, because the last thing we want to do is bring something to town meeting, gets voted on, and then the state says it doesn't comply for some technicality in the language. So we appreciate uh, them giving us the free review and giving us the feedback. We submitted it back in November but due to their 90 day maximum turnaround period, we only received it in February once the warrant had already been printed and advertised. There were a handful of minor points to address, mostly language tweaks that the working group was okay with correcting, but nonetheless, they would still require uh, the amendment to what was printed in the warrant. One comment in particular stood out. The state pointed out that there are many lots in the proposed district that are below the one acre minimum lot size that the working group is proposing. They suggested, and I say suggested, that we lower the minimum lot size in order to make more of the lots conform. And that was, they believed it was in accordance with the purpose of the laws, uh, what they stated. The working group met last week to go over that and just other feedback we'd received along the way with planning board and public hearings and whatnot, and really put the final um, tweaks on what the working group uh, wants to get behind. And the working group feels very strongly that we're unanimously opposed to lowering that lot size, as was suggested. We know there are a number of smaller lots in Canton Junction area. The town of Canton, not the state, but the town had identified this area as a target for transit-oriented development in the master plan and in the, the Canton Junction study years before the state law was filed. So this was you know, this area was in the works for a while. And the working group feels strongly in the acre minimum because it guarantees the 10% of the units would be affordable and that 30% of each lot would be open space. We're talking about an area with a lot of impervious surface area. That means asphalt parking lots right now, not a whole lot of green space and open space. So that was important to the group. In simply allowing, for example, a duplex to become a triplex does nothing to increase affordability or open space. Now that that Stoughton strategy and it works for them and we respect that, but it wasn't the same, uh, not the best strategy for Canton. The town has a vision of how transit oriented housing in that area. In that vision, the working group believes depends on those projects of critical mass that will have a net um, positive impact to the area and to attract those types of developments, we believe the acre minimum is necessary to get that open space and those affordable units as a component of any new development. We've exceeded all the required thresholds set out by the law, the acreage, the unit capacity, and the density. We've exceeded those with what we're proposing. The law allows us to set those per set parameters, such as minimum lot size, height, setbacks, whatnot. And what we're proposing clearly achieves the point of compliance, even with the one acre minimum lot size. So at this time, it, we've drafted a response letter to the state, um, acknowledging, uh, thanking them for their feedback, acknowledging that we've made all the corrections. However, with their suggestion on the minimum lot size, we're going to stick with what we came up with and uh, pending town council's review and endorsement of our position, we would hope for the select boards um, authoring and sending a uh, send, proving and signing and sending of our draft letter. So thank you for your consideration. A uh, quick question, uh, Stores. I, yes. I did see the letter here that they sent back to us and we, we, we've done everything that they've asked us to do. Yes. 
Now, in this letter that they sent back to you at the capital review and analysis, the uh, Executive Office of Housing and uh, Livable Communities has determined that the application submitted does not demonstrate uh, that the subjects will meet the requirements. So to me, that seems like they're moving the goalposts on it. I mean, we've done everything to the letter of the law, so. Well, in that letter, there were a number of technical things that we needed to address, such as things in the site plan language, some overlap with the groundwater district. Um, we, we misinterpreted part of the income limitations as 10 and 10 when it was really 10 total. So there were a lot of little things that we did need to correct that they had correct in that letter. So by standing firm to that one acre, that's not, that's not an issue. Yeah, we believe that th that was a suggestion and okay. that we yeah. still check out right. with what we had. We did follow majority of what they requested. Oh, so, okay, okay, so okay, that clarifies that. Any other questions or? No, and that, I, I think that the key um, is I know the governor's already said she wants to work, <laughs> willing to work with cities and towns. So, and I'm not putting words in town council's mouth, uh, but it, he did say that this does meet the letter of the law, our original, uh, our original uh, motion that's imprinted in the warrant, the warrant that's already been gone to print. So, I'm concerned that they're going to come back and say, "Oh no, no, we told you that didn't. That's not. That can't happen." And I, I don't know if the town council wants to weigh in, but I'm I, I'm in favor of the one acre because uh, triple deckers and things of that nature. That's not what I'm in favor of. And as you said, it won't be uh, automatically uh, affordable housing. But um, she's already, the governor's already said that she's willing and able to work and wants to work with cities and towns. I hope she does. And I'll say that publicly loud and clear. And she wants to come. This is what we're going to be planning on submitting. And I could support it that way. If it go, goes back under the one acre, I couldn't support it. Right. And a lot of other people uh, that I've talked to have spoken to me had the same uh, concerns in questions because this is Canton, it's not a city. It's not, um, it's not. So that's why a lot of people moved here. So, thank I think you. to your, your comment, uh, Mr. Connolly too, the fact, the one portion that we're gonna have to stay on the floor, the 10% workforce we can't have, which was put into the warrant. So I will have to go on the floor and, and have that stricken when we um, actually go to vote at town meeting. And that this is, that's what the full, working group recommended, correct? Correct. Because they came back and told us to change it and I, it was tweaked and I wasn't too happy with that, to be quite honest, but now it's gone back to the original, correct? The original uh, plus the little tweaks like on yeah. the, yeah. Yep. Eyes and, uh, yes. Yeah, exactly. Got yep. the eyes and cross the T's and things of that nature. But the one acre. And I assume town with... council uh, is a lot more knowledgeable than I am that <clears> should, uh, uh, so yes, that is correct. And, I, I respect both of you because you put a lot of work into this and Kevin, uh, you as well, so thank you. Uh, but I'm just concerned that, um, you know, um, put your money where your mouth is, not you, the governor. You want to work with us? We want to work with you. Oh, there's going to be a lot, more, a lot more Miltons out there, a lot more. Definitely, there's going to be a lot more questions. Um, are they going to sue every town, city and town in, this, in the Commonwealth? I, don't, I hope not. Right. You know? The Commonwealth. So Mr. Gerentis is at the... Mr. Durant is at town council. Yes, I wanted to make one comment, which is that we're asking you to uh, uh, support this subject to town council revisions. Yeah. And one of the reasons for that is that today is a, a meeting going on at the Mass Municipal Association at which <clears throat> we are in analyzing the responses made to all the communities who have submitted who's the guy dressed up like a shake to see if they are saying something different for canton as opposed to let's say stoughton or someone else that is happening today i don't have the results of that i had somebody attending that that meeting so we are learning more about what the state is doing and what they're up to by looking at everything they've done to date for all communities. So I'm asking that you include in any motion that is subject to additional revisions from town council. Thank you. Mr. McCoy. Mr. Chair, um, I do not, and I'm not enthused about uh, this at all. Um, I have a real, real, I've asked a bunch of questions. I still haven't got answers. Um, such as how many multifamily units currently exist in the zone, how many do we added. If we put a blank on the acreage that we have in the zone, 
if it was all blank and you can develop it, how many units could be put on it? That whole blank spot. Forget there's anything there. How many units could be put there under the guidelines that are there? On the paper we received from February 1st from the Executive Office of Housing and Living Communities, um, the notable change in language is the word permit from the zoning board in the law of the language. The word permit wants to be special permit, any type of thing with permitting in the, with the zoning board because this is by right. When it's by right, the zoning board has very, very little authorization. They follow the guidelines of the setbacks, size, lots, what have you have, and it eliminates the abata. So if you have a lot across the street from your beautiful single family home, and it's in this zoning, you could be looking at 15 units across the street from your house. So in some of these areas that are in this, and I know the group has done a lot of work in trying to locate these areas. When you do something by right, you're taking the authority of the zoning board to protect the abutters. And I have a real problem with that. In the years that I served on the zoning board, this town made zoning less dense in the years I served. They changed the zoning of golf courses so that you could have houses on golf courses when they sold with minimal one acre lots. They changed zonings all over the town to make it less dense, to make it harder to build. And now in this area, we're gonna make it easier to build more lots. And there's one thing that Mr. Uh, Theodore mentioned earlier in the language is about establishing the minimum size lots. If these minimum size lots go below an acre, if you have a single family in this zone with 15,000 square feet, you may be able to build a three family unit. So you've got to consider the single family house next to a single family house getting to, this could open up Pandora's box without any protections. <clears throat> The zoning board is here to protect the abutters, and I stand by the zoning board. I did it for many years on the zoning board, and I have a real hard time of accepting a by right. So that is where I'm standing. If I, if I got some of these answers, if this was a blank, how many acres in this whole zoning? 150. 150 acres times 15 units, if it was a blank slate. Am I just off the top of my head? Right, just rough math. Well, it's there, over the number that they're talking. Them. I'm just telling you, okay. if there's 150 available acres in Canton and they're allowed to build 15 units on an acre, it's over the 1490. So we have to look at all the numbers. And, and then there's another big cause because we're really concerned in this town is affordable housing. Section 3A does not include any express requirement or authorization for the MBTA community to acquire affordable units in the multifamily housing project. The town wants to. We're taking a little bit of power away from the zoning board to try to enforce it. But if we put 15 units up and 10% is 1.5 units, we should minimal out of 15 units, get two to be ahead of the curve on the affordable units. If we're not guaranteed those two units, we're already falling behind the 10%. So these are the things that we have to answer before we vote on this because we don't want to be stuck with building these units and then falling behind the 10% and doing so. So these are just basic things that we look at and the developers, the developers are not concerned about our 10%, they're the maximum profit. And then the rents, what are the rents gonna be? And the number of bedrooms, there's no limit to the amount of bedrooms they can build in these. It's not two bedroom units, single bedroom units, you can build three or four bedroom units. If you build three or four bedroom units, Families will come, which is great. They come to this community. We are maxed out in our elementary schools. We are engaged in a middle school project now to try and alleviate the elementary schools and keep things going. If we build four bedrooms apartments and three kids come in these each units at 15 units, where are we gonna get the money to educate all these children? It's just a possibility. It doesn't mean it's gonna happen. No one say it's gonna be built, but it's a possibility it can, and we have to think about those possibilities that this could affect our basically operation of our community, especially our schools, when we are building a school <coughs> where we're hoping to build, or we're working on it, to build a school that's gonna alleviate 10, 15 years down the road of overcrowding. I mean, I've lived in this town 
I went to the Kennedy. I went to the middle school. I was the first freshman in the middle school. It's 50 years old. It needs to be dealt with. I cannot stand those temporary classrooms. By the way, I can't wait to get my microdots merch. And it's something that I did a large order last night. So I can't wait. It's something that could definitely affect a whole section of this community. And traffic isn't a concern. It isn't in zoning anymore because you can't do traffic studies because everybody knows the traffic's bad. It's already bad. So if you increase it by 100 cars, it's just going to get worse. And yes, we all know the cut-throughs. My neighborhoods are cut through. All these neighborhoods are cut throughs. Traffic committee's going crazy trying to slow traffic in this town. And then we got speed bumps in every neighborhood. Your merch every rules, man. How much can we so do? Good. We're, we're, we're expanding, but our infrastructure isn't handling it. So this is just something Can't I'm wait. concerned about. And I'm totally I'm I'm very concerned about this by right. So that's all I have to say. Thank you, sir. Anybody else have anything to add or? Uh, oh, the, the last thing I would like to just say is about the affordable housing. Is I went on a website today just to find out, you know, you look at the rents in the community. How much are the rents in the community? What do we get? Three thousand, thirty five hundred, four thousand a month. All right. Who sets the rent? Does the landlord, the state, who sets? Well, just the voucher programs that the state of Massachusetts offers. In Canton, the value of voucher, Section 8 voucher, used in Canton for a two-bedroom apartment, $3,650. A um, MRVP voucher, voucher, Canton Mass, two-bedroom, $3,300. Another voucher program, which is the alternate housing program, $3,350. These are not affordable rents based on the 30% housing rate that they're talking to income, you'd have to bring home clear $10,000, $9,000 to pay the, a month in a household income to make this affordable rent. Think about that. Think about your kids. Think about your family trying to get into these apartments. They're not affordable. So we got to look at how do we can make them affordable. And even at the medium income, it's not on mom and dad salary or dad salary or, 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 or two roommate salary. It's based on a family income, 18 years old. If you live in public housing, 18 years old, that income is counted towards their rent. <clears throat> so you're going to look at how it's all calculated and how it works and how we're trying to get a people to afford to live in the community. So that was just a tidbit I wanted to say and how things are actually affecting this community and where we're headed. So thank you very much. No, so uh, just to clarify, um, we are required by law to send this uh, to town meeting. So what we're approving uh, is Canton's plan to go to town meeting. Uh, so that, that's... Yes, just to clarify. I, I, so I, and I understand that. I, I will I know vote to send it to the yeah, meeting, yeah. but I will. Yeah, I, 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 currently, right now, I'm opposed to it. Right. <laughs> right so, so, just yeah. so you know, my vote, yes, we'll send it to town meeting, but yeah. I'm not. Yeah, Sometimes you. it's hard to tell. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so, so uh, I make a motion to approve the MBTA community zoning uh, pre adoption. Uh, as prepared by our town planner and the uh, planning board, uh, subject to any additional revisions from town council. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any other further comments or questions? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Aye zero. That is a lot of work. Thank you so much. Thank, thank, you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, enough with the masks. Come on. Next on the agenda. All right. Next, Mr. Chair, the select board is going to vote on uh, positions for the annual town meeting articles. Um, it's well worth it, Karen. So at our last thousand meeting, in the chat. We, Thank you so much. Uh, voted. Oops, I'm sorry, I'm now. Thousand in the chat plot across all platforms. Um, Thank you. Last meeting, we voted to um, provide a position on the first 17. So we have 18 to 37. Uh, to go through tonight. My computer is on the fritz a little. All right. Do you have one? So um, Article 18. So if, the, if there's a question from the board, um, the finance director is here uh, to bail me out or uh, the town administrator if, uh, if there's a question. But uh, So Article 18, 
uh, is an appropriation to increase the special education reserve account. So uh, this is a practice that we've done uh, a few times to help the schools um, have like a little bit of money in a savings account to deal with the unknown uh, special education costs because they don't know um, okay. what it's going to be as the years going on and yeah, one changes. Ch one child can move to the town and yep, yep, immediately yep. Uh, wipes it out. So uh, that is Article 18. So I make a motion that the select board approve uh, or support Article 18 as written in the warrant. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any other questions or comments? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Five zero. Um, Article 19, similar. Uh, this is an appropriation to increase the capital uh, stabilization account. So uh, if no questions, I make a motion that uh, we support Article 19 as written in the warrant. Second. Motion we'll made and seconded. Questions or comments? Mm -hmm. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Five zero. Okay. Um, Article 20 is to establish uh, the 1860 Washington Street Redevelopment Stabilization Account. So this is the former St. Gerard's property and what this request is to do uh, is to put money aside for when we uh, start moving forward with uh, redeveloping that property uh, based on the recommendations from the uh, committee. Uh, that we have some money established for this uh, to lessen the burden on the tax uh, taxpayer. And this is Mr. Chair. This is what we did with the uh, Galvin Middle. The Matt, yes, Galvin Middle. School, right? Same thing. Is that correct. Put money in so we can be ahead of the curve. So if things something comes up, we want to do uh, in the future because obviously we bought that property to do something with it. Mr. Chairman, is this plan yes. to be an annual or is just the one time for this year? Every year, just like the capital stabilization account, which is currently an earmark to um, go towards uh, the uh, debt service costs associated with the Galvin School, if that gets approved. So um, that comes up annually. This will be the third year for that one. The previous article, this is the first time for this article. And if the town has the resources next time around and there's a will to uh, put it forward again, it, it could be. So. Thank you. Thank you. So hopefully we will. Hopefully the money will be there. Yeah. The way things are going, we don't know. So I make a motion that the select board support Article 20 as written in the warrant. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any questions, comments? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Zero. Um, Article 21 is to rescind unused borrowing authorizations. And this is uh, typical uh, in the town meeting warrant. But I don't know, Randy, if you would just want to provide a little. Sure. Um, these are uh, these are borrowing authorizations that the town uh, has has approved in the past, but the projects have been completed, um, and so there's no further need to have these authorizations to borrow. The town has no intent to use them to borrow, so it's the best practice is to clean them off the books. That way, when you go for a, a credit rating, you're not getting the question, "Well, you've got these other authorizations you could borrow for. What's going on with that?" So, I'd rather be able to not have to answer that question by saying we've rescinded everything we don't need. Makes sense. Yep. So I make a motion uh, that the select board support Article 21 as written in the warrant. Second. All in favor? Uh, all, motion remains seconded. Any questions, comments? All in favor? Aye. 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 Five zero. Mr. Chair, Article 22 is to transfer the opioid settlement funds into a newly created opioid special revenue fund. Um, so the settlement funds, as the board knows, uh, is what the town has uh, agreed uh, in a class action suit. Uh, and the funds that are received, we would like to put into this special revenue fund, and then it can be used specifically for um, opioid-related projects, uh, funding programs, uh, things like that. So. CASA would have access to it, the fire department, the police department. Um, All opioids. Yeah. Board of Health. Yeah. Board, board of Health. So um, it, it would give access to an account uh, specifically related to um, 
opioid related programs. Do we have a dollar? I'm just curious, is there a dollar figure on that? Yes, um, so this is a technical correction by the state. Um, the dollar figure amount is approximately 153, 154,000. So um, when we started to receive these funds two years ago, um, we were required to put them into the general fund um, because the Department of Revenue said, well, you can't segregate them because there's no law that says you can segregate them, even though they're for a dedicated purpose, opioid abatement. So they finally corrected that this past December and they gave us a mechanism to then now pull these funds that have been sitting in the, uh, in the general fund, which we've earmarked, you know, yeah, each piece yeah. of it. And so now we can move it with this vote, we can move it into the special revenue fund, uh, which is a, a fund that can be at, accessed by the chief, chief executive based on recommendations um, for opioid abatement. And then any future funds that we receive, which we will receive much more over, over time, we'll be able to deposit directly into this account. So it's, it's directly accessible for use without appropriation. Okay. And that's, that, that's what we need. That's what we wanted for the people. And I had read an article that some cities and towns are diverting the money to things that, other things that are not with opioids. We, we haven't that's, done that. We will not do that. No, we will not. We don't want to, can't do that. We want to make it available so can't it can be used right? for opioid abatement. So, Mr. Lockner, right. so I make a motion that the select board approve, uh, support Article 22 as written in the warrant. Second. Motion made and seconded. All of, uh, any questions or comments from the board? All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye zero. Um, Article 23 is the appropriation of proceeds from the TNC per ride assessment funds. So, uh, Mr. Scollins, yeah. Yes, um, this, uh, uh, this article is no longer required. There was a change in the state law this past year that allows these funds to be uh, to be used from a special revenue fund without further appropriation. I believe it's the planning board um, who uh, puts forward projects for this. So this is so we left this in here just to memorialize the fact that we won't be bringing this forward uh, again unless we get over over twenty five thousand, which we haven't. We average like six to eight thousand. So over twenty five thousand, we have to bring it forward. But if not, um, it the funds just go directly to the special revenue account, which is where they are right now. And so we don't need to appropriate any money. Okay. So, so, no so we don't need that. to take postpone a position it. because the, <clears throat> I assume, finance committee will indefinitely postpone. Yes, that's that's how they voted. Okay. Uh, article 24. Uh, this is to amend the bylaw, Article 4, Section 12, regarding voting, and Section 17, the motion to require the use of written ballots. Um, so this is an article to allow written ballots at future uh, town meetings, correct? It's, it's well, this, this ties into the, um, the ability to use electronic voting. Yep. So this would allow you know, electronic voting to be an option during town meeting, but still maintaining you know, the moderator having the ability to use written ballots should electronic voting not be available. Okay. All right, so uh, I make a motion that the uh, select board support Article 24 is written in the warrant. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any questions or comments? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye, zero. Uh, next article is Article 25. Um, where is this? So, um, Ms. Thomas, is this the one you want to come speak on? <laughs> yep, ar Article 25. I was. Second guessing myself too. I just help me with the article nine number. Is this the finance committee one or the modernization one? Uh, this is the finance okay. committee um, having to do with the language uh, changes. So, so just to clarify, um, the purpose of this is to um, make modifications in the language uh, to strike the phrase, uh, the phrase involving appropriation and replace it with the phrase having a financial impact on the town, including but not limited to appropriations. And in section four, similar language. So it really is um, intended to be more consistent with current practice. Um, and I think from a rationalization point of view, think about something like is gonna be discussed later about a diff. <laughs> and um, you know, the way with, if you just keep this at appropriations, it's 
like, well, wouldn't you want the finance committee weighing in on that? <laughs> Something that has a tax impact, that has impact on revenue, not just expenses. Um, and this is very much consistent with past practice. And in fact, the bylaws actually require that the finance committee make recommendations in, um, on articles in the warrant and doesn't actually specify. So um, we're just trying to kind of clean up some language, particularly based on some feedback we received after the special town meeting. Um, so the finance committee has voted to support um, this bylaw change. Any other questions on this? Or do you have any questions, Ms. Thomas? Do we have a motion? Uh, Mr. Chair, I make a motion that the select board support Article 25 as written in the warrant. Second. Motion made and seconded. Questions, comments? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Aye zero. <clears throat> Thank you, Ms. Thomas. You might as well. You might as well just go on to the next one. Yeah, <laughs> okay. so, um, Which one is this? The next one. Give me one second. It's down a couple more. Yeah. <laughs> It's uh, 30. Thank you. 30, All right. So uh, do you want to give a brief narrative sure. on Article 30? So Article 30 um, proposes a govern government modernization um, committee. And um, the Finance Committee voted um, prior to the warrant being finalized to submit an article for govern government modernization. Um, that article was modified by Town Council, and we appreciate his insights based on his experience doing this work in other towns. However, the Finance Committee um, wants to do some additional work to make some further adjustments or, or within whatever mechanisms were allowed within the town meeting structure. Um, we pr initially proposed a govern governance and bylaw um, committee. Um, it was changed in the warrant to just bylaw. Um, I think it's the feeling of the um, Finance Committee that those two, you kind of can't untangle them. There's a lot in our bylaws that relates to governance. So to just sort of do the bylaws without that. Um, however, one of the things that we also got feedback on that I think was you know right on spot is timeline. So the article as it's proposed now would have recommendations coming forward to the annual town meeting in 2025. That actually isn't enough time to do the work. Um, it's not enough time to do the work in general, but also if you think about the timelines we have for the warrant, the committee gets appointed by July 1, Everything has to be into the, you know, for the warrant in December, January. That, that's not enough time to do the work. So I think, you know, what you'll be seeing is probably a motion coming from the finance committee that will make some adjustments um, in timeline. Um, probably wanting to stay with governance, not just bylaws, and um, and also some adjustments to the membership because that was also changed <coughs> from the original article. Um, we have no objections to the membership that was proposed, that was put in by town council, but want a stronger voice from the residents. Um, right now, it was a majority of uh, town employees who need to be there. They know the mechanics. They know how town hall runs. They understand, you know. The I thought she was going to say they know the McAlberts. But we also feel that um, uh, we need at least one, maybe two more citizens who um, have um, also knowledge and experience and desire to um, have input into um, changes that may go forward in our town. Um, so I think that, you know, once the FinCom finalizes and votes on our motion, we'd be happy to kind of come back and talk to you about that. Um, at this point, we'd encourage your support for the article, um, understanding that we may recommend, our motion may recommend some changes. And I will just say, you know, some people say, well, why do we need this? We don't, you know, why, why do we have to do anything? Um, I think that um, if you dig into the bylaws, and I'm sure many of you have, you find sometimes more questions than you do answers. <laughs> um, you know, one of the questions that's been come to, has come to me recently, when we had a whole lot more people go to town meeting, um, they said, so how does the moderator get picked? And I had someone say to me, well, I, you know, I think I'm going to go to the annual town meeting and I'm going to ask to be nominated for moderator. And for those folks who don't know, there's a lot of preparation work that goes. So the person who expects to be appointed moderator at town meeting is generally involved beginning in March and April, working with people to, um, you know, town officials, select board, finance committee, others to do the preparation in order that that town meeting is going to run smoothly. But if you look at our bylaw, it doesn't tell you how the, how the, what the nominate, you know, other than it will be nominated from town meeting floor. 
well, that would never work to have somebody stand up and say, I want to be the moderator and get elected right there on town meeting floor. Mr. Hines is here. He can tell you <laughs> that that would be very terrible for everybody. 95% <laughs> so. of my time spent on a town meeting is spent prior to the town meeting right. itself. So. Yeah. And, and then the other issue is that our bylaws haven't been looked at in a holistic way. We have had tweaks here and there, language changes, this article sort of adjusted, just kind of like we're even talking about the voting. We haven't really had a holistic look. How does it hang together? There's language in the bylaw about the finance committee role that's very broad and very general. And then you go to the section on the finance committee and it narrows in, well, what applies? Um, and so I think that um, in looking at this, you know, we're really sort of saying it's time to kind of take a more comprehensive look and also get input from our community around what things people want to see um, going forward. So um, I think basically it's about a time to take a fresh look. We're not alone in this. Sharon recently completed a, a bylaw review process. Natick has done one in the past couple of years. A number of other cities and towns have been engaged in this. And we do request an appropriation. We picked a number, it might not be the right one, but it's probably will get us through at least the first year of the work um, because we will need a consultant to work on this with us. Um, there's two groups out there that do a lot of this work, uh, the Collins Center at UMass Boston and Mass Municipal Association, uh, uh, Metropolitan Planning Council. Uh, they do this kind of work. So um, I think we'll wanna get um, the committee, not me, <laughs> but the town will wanna get that kind of expert guidance from people who have done this work with other cities and towns, because it's, it's a big job. So that's kind of where we stand and what we're looking for support. And I do want to acknowledge that I had an opportunity to um, meet with Mr. Duty, also Jen Chameleon, and I think really got some helpful feedback um, from them as well as we think about how this goes forward. Mr. Chairman, through you to the chair. Uh, so if I heard you correctly, uh, is it have you been working on you know, your motions that you're going to be adding to this? It, it's coming up on our agenda. I think it might even be tomorrow night. If okay. not tomorrow night, the next night. And you'll, next you'll give meeting. it to us so we can give it to the public and is aware of what's going on. Oh, well. yeah, absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Yep. Okay, thank so, you. Yeah. Yeah, and, and any motions um, will be in the warrant that goes out to the right. public. Okay. So, um, so there, there, there shouldn't be any surprises. Um, and I assume in the past couple of years, the moderator has done an open session ahead of time to review all the articles and, and sort of motions. Uh, you know, I can't speak for the moderator, <laughs> but um, certainly that would be another opportunity for us to educate the public. Thank you. Thank you. So, um, so, so, Ms. Thomas, are you okay if we defer this uh, until we see the? Sure. Have, How, however you want. Yeah. If, yeah. That, if that's okay. Yeah. However you want to handle. Is that all right? It. Yes. Absolutely. 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 Okay. Okay. Yeah. Very good. Thank, thank, thank you. Thank you. Yep. And if you have any other questions, please feel free. Um, you know, I think we're. That's not, a good one. You know, we're really looking to sort of say, town government has changed a lot. <laughs> the you know our town has grown. The complexity of town government um, has increased. How do we make sure that our bylaws and our government structures are following along with that and really meet our needs? I think we're in agreement that this is a good study. Yeah. Yep. Christine, thank you so much for the 10 Very on nice. PayPal. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. So Article 26 is an article to transfer Shepherd Pond, Bolivar Pond, Silk Mill, and Messenger Pond land from the Select Board to the Conservation Commission. So um, it really belongs under the Conservation Commission. Let them take care of it. Um, I, don't, I don't think it should be under our control. Seems like there are a lot of people watching that no, stream tonight. If, if no questions, uh, I make a motion with the select board <clears throat> support. Article 26 is written in the warrant. Second. Both made and seconded. Questions or comments? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, next, Article 27, this is an appropriation to increase the Conservation Land Fund. Um, so, Mr. Scollins, can you just? Sure. Uh, the Conservation uh, Commission has a land fund. Uh, it's got approximately $178,000 in it. Um, and it's common for uh, Conservation Commissions to ask for anywhere from five dollars to $10,000 to contribute towards the fund so um, the commission can do uh, work that's not other, otherwise funded within the budget uh, to maintain properties um, and then in a rare case uh, to be able to um, 
act quickly maybe to uh, you know acquire a property. Obviously, mm -hmm. this isn't enough money to acquire a property, but but that's one of the purposes that a land fund is for. And these funds, like it can be used for uh, treatments of the ponds. Yes. And, yeah, that's important. So yeah, exactly. And what is the appropriation going to be? Seventy-five hundred. Okay. Do we have a motion? So I make a motion the select board approve Article 27 as written in the warrant. Second. Opposed and being seconded. Any questions, comments? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Five zero. Um, Article 28. Mr. Hines, I apologize. I should have brought you up earlier as well. I, I can wait. That's fine. Thank you. Uh, Alan Hines representing the Repair and Sun Heritage Trust uh, with respect to Article 28. Um, the purpose of this article was to leverage the district improvement financing plan to help supplement the funds we're raising to build the museum. I apologize that we are not ready to share with you uh, tonight a motion that we uh, have been working on. Um, as you know, uh, working within a DIF um, is a very legal complex matters. Uh, we have had sought to uh, get town council's uh, perspective and, and approval that what we were trying to accomplish was uh, legal. Uh, we, re we received uh, confirmation of that um, this week, um, but unfortunately our motion as we originally had proposed didn't meet the objectives of the town finance uh, administrator. So, um, so we retooled uh, and I met with him this morning uh, to show him uh, the proposed workings of a, a revised motion, motion uh, that we would uh, take and um, I, I would characterize our revised motion um, as a win, win, win. Um, it's gonna be a win for the Revere and Sun because I think we will hopefully uh, receive some financing uh, from the district improvement plan, but it's also gonna be a win for the municipal departments and the uh, school departments because under the way that the current DIF is operating today, um, this, the municipal side and the, and the schools uh, will not have access to um, the uh, a significant amount of funds that are available and our motion will um, seek to um, ease up on that um, to put um, some authority in the select board through the finance director um, to ease up on that. So uh, we've submitted a revised motion to town council, hoping to get that approved. Uh, we'd like to vet it through the finance committee um, and then come back to this board and explain to you how this would all work. Um, and hopefully uh, I'm not misspeaking and uh, the town finance director is here that, uh, that I, I do think that, that um, our proposal will improve upon um, uh, the, the process as it exists today. So, um, and really benefit the town in, in, a, in a lot of ways, given the flexibility it needs to meet its financial goals. So, so hopefully uh, we can come before you again um, and show you the details of that uh, after vetting that through the finance committee. But uh, uh, at this point, we're that, that's about until we get approval from fi um, town council that what we're trying to accomplish is uh, legal. Uh, we didn't want to go too too far. So. Okay. Any other questions? So I'm asking at this point so just to defer to defer until uh, we can uh, bring the more details to to this uh, sure. board. Okay. Great. All right. Thank you, Alan. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Alan. Thanks, Alan. Two minutes? Yeah. <laughs> Rockstar. Rockstar. Uh, Article 29, this is to remove the facilities <clears throat> department from the Department of Public Works. So Mr. Duty, do you want to comment on this? Yeah, sure. So we created a central maintenance division this year to focus on uh, the town's buildings. It's, it's our largest asset and um, it, they definitely needed more attention. So we created central maintenance so that we could take a look at these buildings and, and really try to get them in proper condition. Uh, go back and look at the building study from 2017 and start to act upon some of the recommendations that were made back then mm -hmm. and certainly update that. Um, and the, the, the goal was to get central maintenance to be its own department, with its own department head, and then staff it properly to take care of the, the town's you know, largest asset. Part of that process, the first part of that process was to hire a central maintenance director, which we did for this fiscal year. Uh, the second step in this process would be to then make it its own department. So this article is seeking to do that. Um, 
the reason why it has to be a town article is because at some point, uh, Canton voted through town meeting to have DPW absorb central maintenance, or it was known as building and grounds. So at one time it was its own standalone department, so we're seeking to get it back to being its own standalone department. Thank you. Makes sense. Yeah, makes sense. So we have a motion. Mr. Chair, I make a motion that the select board support Article 29 as written in the warrant. Second. Well, we've been made and seconded. Any other questions or comments? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Aye zero. Uh, next article is Article 31. This is to accept Saddleback Lane and Horseshoe Lane uh, as town ways. These roads are currently not accepted roads. Um, they do not meet the criteria uh, of an accepted road for the town of Canton, but there has been a request uh, from some of the residents um, to accept this. So, um, Charlie, do you want to talk at all about it or? Uh, you don't have to. No, sure. Yeah, I, uh, I actually spoke about this at the Finance Committee meeting last week. Uh, the residents of Saddleback and Horseshoe are seeking to get their roads accepted uh, by the town. This, as you recall, was a 40B development. So the, it was built in accordance with the regulations for 40B at the time, and the town uh, approved uh, the roadway and the property. So what this seeks to do is for the town for town meeting to vote and accept this as a public way or a public road and if that gets accepted as a public road then the town is responsible as it is for all public roads to maintain it plow it fix the water pipes and so forth uh, there you know there's some some question about um, you know does the road meet all the requirements of what we would require a, a, a subdivision road to be built today um, it does not but it, it did meet the requirements under 40B. So the question for the town meeting will be, do they want to accept the road? Uh, there are some factors that would impact that decision. There is a sewer pumping station that is on the road that pumps into the Randolph sewer system that uh, needs to be maintained. And there is um, um, an issue with the line of sight as you come out from uh, Saddleback onto Randolph Street, so <coughs> line of sight under regular subdivision regulations is required about 325 feet in, other, in each direction. Oh, yeah. This is approximately 290 feet, so it doesn't quite get there. Um, and there's also a stormwater management um, retention pond, uh, pond on, on the property as well. So the town would at some point probably have to assume the responsibilities of maintaining at least the stormwater and the sewer pumping station should the HOA that currently maintains it today dissolve. Do we have a price tag on that? No. 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 Mr. Mr. Chair, Chair, though, in watching the FinCon meeting on this, it's a currently a private way, I believe. Correct. It's a private way of development. Yes. Um, the road, I've been up there, the road was paved about four years ago. It's in excellent condition. The site view is a uh, concern with the town on a subdivision, A1 subdivision put in today. Um, I don't think they should be penalized with that. I went the whole thing on the FinCon, and their biggest concern was the sewer line maintenance and the pumping station pumping and station. the pond. So those, the pumping station is a big issue. Yeah. Um, so it, me, the acceptance of the road without the pumping station and the pond, if that was in their perpetuity, take care of that. I, I don't have a problem with the accepting the streets, seeing there's 35 homes there paying full value, full tax values of their properties. You know, do we plow that street as we, we do. right now? So we plow I mean, and they have property. We plow it, yeah, so, yeah, trash. Know, but uh, those are the big issues that has to be clarified, and it wasn't clarified at the FinCon. No. And it I, takes care of what? And that was the, the biggest thing on FinCon, not taking a vote on it, was who's actually going to be responsible for them. So the, there's language in the, um, the agreement that um, the HOA will take care of the sewer uh, and water. Um, but in that same agreement, if the town accepts this, uh, the HOA can dissolve. So, that's a so they're I telling mean, us like, hey, we're gonna take care of it of still, so accept this. Um, but as soon as we accept it, they can dissolve and then the town is responsible. And Mr. Chair, I will say that uh, in the FinCom meeting, uh, Mr. Schneider, who re represents the, the residents there, uh, when I brought that to his attention, he did indicate that the HOA would not be dissolving and would continue the maintenance. So I just think we need to clarify uh, maybe get some agreement 
yeah. um, that, that the HOA will continue to maintain uh, those facilities. And the other question I had, have we accepted a private way in the past as a road, public road? I, we definitely have, we have accepted that? them. I just, I'm not sure when the last one was. Was Colts Crossing a private way? Yes, it was. Yeah, I think they did. They did better than charge. Did better. So, charges, did well, so they did as, right. Exactly. Um, well, not well. Um, up off of Walpole Street, Knob Hill, Knob Hill. Thank you. Yeah, but this isn't. We're not looking. This this is this is an issue that could be happening in the future with the pumping station and all that. That's yes. what we're concerned. That's, that's, what that's my concern. Yeah, it's not yeah. so much with betterment. So no, but my concern is the fix. We've had a couple pumping stations. One on SD Way, one on Oxbow Road. That was with the town. Real quick, I just want to um, let everybody know, uh, Karen is trending in Massachusetts on Twitter right now. Uh, 54,000 posts about Karen. I don't think it's Karen Reed, but uh, that is trending. Uh, I'm trying to look at some posts right now. I do see a few posts for Karen Reed. It's a lot of a lot of posts starting to show up. Interesting. Original the Rosewood. We had Rosewood. We <coughs> had... Um... Um, up on the up 138 Windsor Woods. Those two were accepted to put us over. We were caught between a rock and a hard place. We had 10%. I mean, we were right at the 10%. We had to get over 10% to, to, for no more 40 Bs. Now we're, we, that put us to 13%. Right now we're roughly at 12%. So we're still on the upper end. So there were 22 waivers on that street. That street's not, you know, not legally wide enough. And you know better than I for uh, two fire engines that can't go up and come down at the same time. And I'm not, you know, town meeting will ultimately make this decision, but that's a, a major concern of mine. And also there's 88 roads, uh, streets in this town that are unaccepted, 88 of them. That's a lot of roads. And if we open this, I know there's, there's talk of putting a committee together, maybe bond something to address some of these towns. I mean, some of these streets, excuse me. Uh, and that's something that uh, is gaining momentum because, um, you know, people say, well, how did this happen? Um, because you'd be surprised that the streets are unaccepted. And the people, you know, your lawyer, your bank, um, your real estate agent, they should have, they should have, in the builder, the builder, you know, got the money and, and took off. Let's be honest. Got the money and they took call, off. Call it what it is. So I'm got very the money concerned. There's 88 off. roads and it's going to open the floodgate. And, um, <laughs> Brown finger. Because it's upwards of several hundred thousand, at least $200,000. The last two on SD Way and Oxbow Road. Uh, Mr. Chairman. Money the call. Mr. Stone. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I just wanted to clarify that if you accept the road, you accept everything underneath it, underneath it. forever. So it, so it, water and sewer is underneath it. Right. Um, Storm water is underneath it. So there's no separating that out. Right. You accept the road, you accept all the infrastructure and the liability. Right. And, and just by law, <clears throat> if roads are not accepted, uh, the town can't spend more than $500 yeah. per fiscal year fixing something. I mean, if there's an emergency, we've done in the past, um, but we do uh, plow it, we do sand it, and we do um, trash, pick up the trash. Because um, legally we don't have to, but I, as I've always said, morally I do, and we have a rule of thumb, anything more than two homes, God forbid there's a fire, God forbid. or there's a, uh, a fire, uh, a police emergency, we have to get the, the emergency folks up there to help, help the folks, so. So. <laughs> Crickets. Walker, do we put this on motion? So, um, through you, Mr. Chair. So, is uh, Mr. Schneider is coming back with language for this article that the HOA is going to maintain the right. infrastructure underneath? Or I have not spoken with Attorney Schneider since the since we were at the Fin Company, so I am not sure what he needs so, to do. So, why don't we just take a position on this tonight to um, to either support or not support it. Okay. So um, I make a motion that the select board does not accept. Um, not, not on these, no, I'm sorry. This is the, this is the, this is a board decision. We're, board we're decision. discussing how we stand on articles. Articles. That's what we're doing tonight. So it's not okay. open for discussion. If you, have, if you have a question about this, you can certainly do this at town meeting. So tell me we'll make the ultimate decision, just so you know. <laughs> yeah. Hey. Yes, it's Peter Griffin. So, Lockman. so uh, I make a motion that the select board does not support Article 31 as written in the warrant. Second. Okay. Motion made and second. Any other questions or comments from the board? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Aye, zero. Aye, zero.
It's always five zero. Article 32, 33, 34, and 35 are uh, zoning articles, and we typically defer to the, uh, sorry, and 36. So 32 through 36 are zoning articles. Yep. Uh, and I make a motion that the select board uh, defer those articles to the planning board. Second. Both the major seconded. No questions or comments on them. Aye. All in favor? Aye. 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 Five zero. I know. Finally, Mr. Chair, Article 37, this is the budget ball. Um, <laughs> so uh, this is just to appropriate the funds to meet the expenses for next fiscal year. So I make a motion that the select board support Article 37 as written on the warrant. Second. Both have made and seconded. Any questions or comments on it? Hearing none, all in favor. All right. Aye. 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 Zero. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Have a good night. Thank you. Thank you, Alan. Thank you, Randy. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Alan. Next on the agenda. All right, so now can move here. All right, so um, we are postponing uh, item number two, which was the um, auto gallery, Canton Auto Gallery. Yep, yeah. okay. Um, so, number three, uh, I move that the board approve the application to obtain a special license to serve all alcoholic beverages and one day entertainment at a one day event for Patrice Wesner at the barn in the open space next to the barn at Paul Revere Heritage Site for Rolling Mill Way on June 22nd, 2024 from 3.30 p.m. to 9 p.m. contingent upon building commissioner, police chief, and fire chief approval. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye zero. Next, Mr. Chair, I move that the board approve the application to obtain a special license to serve wine and malt beverages at a one-day event, a trivia night fundraiser to be held for the Friends of the Canton Public Library, located at 786 Washington Street, Canton, on May 10th, 2024, from 7 p.m. to 11 p.m., contingent upon building commissioner, police chief, and fire chief approval. Second. Motion made and second. Any questions? Any none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Five zero. Uh, next, Mr. Chair, I move that the board approve the application to obtain a special license to serve all alcohol at a one-day event and application for a one-day entertainment for the Sharon Crowley Martin Mon Memorial Fundraiser to be held at Prowse Farm, 5 Blue Hill River Road on May 4th, 2024 from 4.30 p.m. to 10.30 p.m. contingent upon building commissioner, police chief, and fire chief approval. Second. Motion we'll remains second. Any questions? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Aye, zero. Next, I move that the board approve the application to obtain a special license to serve all alcohol at a one-day event, the St. Patrick's di uh, Dinner at St. Oscar Romero Parish, 700 Washington Street, on March 16th, 2024, 5 p.m. to 11 p.m., contingent upon building commissioner, police chief, and fire chief approval. Second. Both remain seconded. Any other questions? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye, Aye zero. I move that the board approve the request to hold the Trillium Road Race to be held on May 11th, 2024 at 9 a.m., the allowance of alcohol at 10 a.m., an allowance of entertainment for an MC uh, DJ at 9 a.m., both times outside of approved license permitting hours. So, uh, and that is contingent on police approval. Second. Motion made and second. Any other questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye, zero. I move that the board approve the request to hold the Anthony Maffey Memorial Walk to be held on Sunday, June 2nd, 2024, from 1 p.m. to 5 p.m., subject to police approval. Second. Motion been made and seconded. Any questions? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Five zero. Thank you. Good luck. I move that the board approve the extension of Municipal Yard Waste Transfer Site Agreement to American Earth Products. Second. Was we made a second? Any other questions, comments? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Five zero. I move that the board approve the request to hold the Little League opening day parade on April 27th, 2024. Second. Was we made a second? Any comments, questions? Uh, the the okay. only comment, sorry, Mr. Chair, is uh, it's a new route. Normally we come out of the high school and take a left and take Washington Street to Dedham, but uh, we're now going down Revere and Sherman and Reynolds. Oh, that way, backwards. Yeah. Okay. 
So. Any, other, uh, any other questions, comments? All in favor? Aye. 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 Marilyn, thank you for the 10, the $10 donation. Uh, thank, you. Uh, thank you. Thank you. At the recommendation of the human resource director and the town accountant, I move that the board approve the appointment of accounting specialist, accounts payable, uh, Deanna O'Neill. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any other questions, comments? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Aye zero. At the recommendation of the human resource director and the operations manager, I move that the board approve the appointment of heavy equipment operator, um, Basur Yomar Rosado. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any comments, questions? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye, Aye zero. Uh, and this is a reappointment for the cultural council, which is about to expire in its first second term. I move that the board approve the appointment of member to the Canton uh, Cultural Council, uh, Patricia Cohen. Second. Those were made and seconded. Any comments, questions? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Sorry. Aye zero. Aye. Uh, next, I move that the board accept and authorize the use of the gift in accordance with the terms thereof under Mass General Law, Chapter 44, Section 53A, the donation of $25 in the memory of Ada Goodrich, from the Women's Benevolent Union Congressional Church of Canton to the Parks and Recreation Department. Second. Motion made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. I move that the board accept and authorize the use of the gift in accordance with the terms thereof on the Mass General Law, Chapter 44, Section 53A, the donation of $10,000 from Canton Copper Works, LLC, into the Conservation Land Fund. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any questions, comments? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. I move that the board accept and authorize the use of the gift in accordance with the terms thereof under Mass General Law, Chapter 44, Section 53A, the donation of $100 from Lillian and Robert Munier. Munier to the Department of Elder and Human Services. Second. Motion remains second. seconded. Any comments, questions? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye zero. I move that the board accept and authorize the use of the gift in accordance with the terms thereof under Mass General Law, Chapter 44, Section 53A, the donation of $1,500 in memory of Bob DSO from the DSO family to the Department of the Elder and Human Services. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any other questions, comments? Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. Aye. What a great man he, Bob DSO, was. Yeah. Sorely missed. Absolutely. I move that the board accept and authorize the use of the gift in accordance with the terms thereof on the Mass General Law, Chapter 44, Section 53A, the following donations to the Beautification Committee for Cleanup Day. Trillium Brewing uh, Company, $250. The Bank of Canton, $1,000. Hebrew Senior Life, $2,500. And SEM X2 Incorporated, $250. Second. Motion made and seconded. All in favor? All right. Aye. Comments? Aye. All in favor? Five zero. And this is part of the grant agreement for the billboard at 120 Cedar Street. I move that the board accept and authorize the use of the grant in accordance with the terms thereof under Mass General Law, Chapter 44, Section 53A, the grant of 12,500 from Outfront Media for 120 Cedar Street. Second. Second. Those remain second. Any other comments, questions? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Five zero. Uh, this is for a street light to be installed on pole 37, which is to the left of 400 Washington Street. And I believe this was a citizen. Uh, citizen request. There was a light up there. Um, yeah, the, 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 this would be for one. I thought there was a couple of lights that went down in that area years ago that were never replaced. But I guess this would be the side of it. So yep. I, uh, uh, the GPW went up. Again, I thought there was two, but I can look into that. But. I move that the board, um, sorry, Mr. Chair. I move that the board use up to $2,000 from the billboard mitigation account to install a new street light on Washington Street. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any other questions or comments on this? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Aye zero. Next, Mr. Chair, the vendor warrant total for the week of 2-16-2024 is $1,876,000. The payroll warrant total for the week of 2-16-2024, $301,804.51. The vendor warrant total for the week of 2-23-24 is $1,431,212.84. The payroll warrant total for the week of 2-23-24 
$1,584,335.17. The vendor warrant total for the week of March 1st, 2024, $1,834,111.86. <throat> the payroll warrant total for the week of 3124, $300,438.62. Next, Mr. Chair, I move that the board approve the cemetery lot and perpetual care deed. Second. Motion is made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye, zero. Next, I move that the board approve the minutes from the select board meetings of February 20th, 2024. Second. Motion is made and seconded. Comments, questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Um, so in topics not anticipated, uh, we have just two items. So, uh, Mr. Duty, one of them is to approve the warrant. Do we need to hold off on that while we're waiting for um, the Finance Committee and Mr. Hines to weigh in on their articles? That's a good question. I would defer to Town Council on that. This town, this is the election, not town meeting. This is the election. Oh, the election. I apologize. Oh, I it's, oh. it's not about the warrant. Or Sorry, the I apologize. <laughs> you confused me. I, I saw the warrant. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, so, at the request of the town clerk, I move that the board uh, approve the warrant for the annual town election. Second. Was made and seconded. Any comments, questions? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, also a topic not anticipated, the superintendent of public works is asking for authority to be the signatory to file a grant for the Canton uh, lead service line inventory and replacement plan. Um, so I make a motion to um, authorize the superintendent of public works to apply and sign for a grant for up to $280,000 for the Canton lead service line inventory and replacement plan. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any comments or questions? Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, next, Mr. Chair, we have the town administrator update. Mr. Duty. Not just one, one item tonight, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, for the board's information, the um, human resource director for the town has scheduled supervisory training for uh, departments for their assistance. So this would be for the next level below the department head. She's organized um, supervisory training that's going to take place uh, over three weeks. It'll be, uh, it'll be each Thursday for three weeks where the assistants will um, go through a variety of topics that have to do with, you know, supervision of employees. So it's a, it's a, a progressive uh, program that she, she's putting forward. It hasn't been done here in the past. So, um, you know, really uh, grateful that she put that together. Should, uh, should do a lot of good for our assistants in helping them become better leaders uh, and, and also improve succession planning. So kudos to her. So we thank you. Um, uh, next, yeah. Mr. Chair, we have uh, some clerk notes, so I'll defer to me. Um, so a reminder that the third annual Canton Cleanup Day will be held on Saturday, April 6th from 10 to 12. Uh, the rain date will be Sunday the 7th. People interested in volunteering should visit the website keepcantonbeautiful.org. The Canton Library will be hosting a vibrant Persian New Year celebration on March 23rd at 11 a.m. All are welcome, but this event is tailored more towards children. Please visit the library for more details. The Canton Heritage Festival uh, is coming soon to the Paul Revere Heritage Site. The date will be May 18th, and more details will be uh, coming soon. Uh, I suggest that you come and see Legally Blonde, the musical, at Canton High School this coming weekend. Tickets are still available uh, for shows on Friday, Saturday night, and Sunday afternoon, but they are going fast. And just on behalf of the select board, congrats to all of our student athletes at CHS who made it into the playoffs. It was a great season for all of those teams. Next, Mr. Chair, the select board will hold its next meeting on Tuesday, March 19th, 2024 at 7 p.m. in the Sala Meeting Room, Memorial Hall, 801 Washington Street. Okay. That's it. With that, so, public comments. Next, next to the public comment section, again, I'm going to remind people that this is, um, the, that right. the, uh, will be 15 minutes total with a firm three minutes per speaker. Um, I would encourage those that wish, do wish to speak, be mindful of the others.
corresponding with that, we'll go back and forth. We'll start on the left side of the room. If you can just identify yourself, please, and go from there. That's my side? My side? Yeah, yep. Is my microphone on? Should be. Yep. 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 Uh, Kathleen Howley, Canton resident. There was a gun threat at last month at the Canton Middle School. Instead of addressing it transparently and responsibly like Norwood did when it had hit its shooting threat at its middle school on Friday, the Canton superintendent and the Canton chief of police covered it up. Parents received no details about the shooting threat in Canton that was averted only by chance. A parent happened to see it and report it. The only communication was a super vague email sent two hours after parents dropped their kids at school the next day. It was deliberately vague about a threat of violence, far more vague than other safety updates we get from the schools about medical emergencies or power outages. It did not use the word gun or weapon. I've seen the video. The student says he's locked and loaded, that he has cleaned his guns on Sunday, and that the next day, a Monday, is a school day, he will see you all in hell. The wording reminded some parents, including myself, of the threat posed by Ethan Crumley the night before he went to school and killed four children. We have received zero information, including the type of gun and whether the police searched the house for other guns. Recently, a Canton citizen wrote to Charlie Duty about the shooting threat. Charlie said it was the superintendent's responsibility and the police couldn't say anything, even though other towns, including Norwood, are able to update their citizens, minus the minor's name, of course. There you have three of the highest paid, the three highest paid employees in Canton. The superintendent, the police chief, and the town administrator. None of them feel urgency about communicating with parents about a threat of violence involving Canton children. It's been five weeks. You, the select board, are the police commissioners of our town. Our police chief's contract says she works under the direct day-to-day -day supervision of the select board and the town administrator. You've said that you don't, uh, you don't want to oversee the police chief, so you don't do it. Imagine if any of us said that about our job. We don't like doing part of it, so we don't do that part. In Norwood, the police updated the entire town daily, and this Sunday night, they announced they arrested a 12-year-old boy and charged him with threatening a mass shooting. The police also said they searched the boy's house for guns, and they didn't find any weapons at all. How reassuring for the parents of Norwood students. Other towns can provide that information to residents, but not Canton. In Canton, we get zero information. Importantly, the students got no information about the consequences of making such threats. Hopefully, there were some. Without consequences, there's no deterrence. Two middle schools, six miles apart. Canton swept the threat under the rug. That's not a way to ensure future safety. I suggest you step up and inform residents of the facts before asking us in May to approve 56 million for the school and more than 6 million to fund the police. We are at a dangerous moment. The Canton police are being investigated by the DOJ and the FBI. In a court hearing today, we learned the FBI has, has concluded definitively that the murdered police officer was not hit by a vehicle. In other words, Karen Reed's SUV did not hit him, according to the FBI. Another black eye for our police. Any town leader who cannot act responsibly in this moment needs to step aside or be put on leave and let someone else perform their duties, especially when it comes to the safety of our children. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Good evening. I have a question for the board. Identify yourself, please. Jennifer O'Donnell. I have a question for the board. No question, because it's not. Is it question. obvious it's that you backed the wrong horse yet? I have purposefully not brought up the Karen Reed case to the select board meetings outside of speaking in memory of John O'Keefe. And I, want, I won't pretend to know what happened that awful night. However, what is very clear is it wasn't Karen Reed. I'm not sure if you have been following, but the last hearing, we all got to watch Chris walk in behind a woman who gladly used her body to entrap a journalist for reporting too effectively. A human shield, smiling smugly, feeling so smart, well, it's backfiring. Good smile, Chris. Chris has shown us how low he's willing to go. I believe the court was told she is family. Chris has taken to using people as collateral now, bending and twisting the laws and rules to his own needs. Chris Albert, you and the Commonwealth brought the circus to our town. You and your bad judgment call after bad judgment call are the reason so many keep showing up. It's that simple. You are the sideshow. You claim to be a scared witness. You're not scared, Chris. This is a game to you. Don't know what happened that night, but we do know what's happened ever since. And you continue to abuse the seat that you sit in. 
and use your resource, our resources as a town and a state for your personal protection, including using us as your human shield. You weren't scared when you singled me out at the courthouse, Chris. I stood in silence exercising my First Amendment, holding this sign here. It's been the same sign that I've held ever since September. Would I be using that? You asked me as you cocked your little head, would you be using this as your school committee campaign? No, Chris, because until you singled me out, I was able to keep these two completely separate. I have this sign from the start. We have Meatball Morrissey and Corrupt Proctor, infamous solo cops in a killer playlist. Nothing scary, nothing bullying, nothing about you, nothing about anyone else in this town. No mention of the McAlberts. <laughs> you have used trashy people in court as a shield, and you have used our town as a shield long enough. You and my and the entire family and social circle are involved in this case to making too involved to be making any sound judgments on behalf of our town. You should take Thank the you. time Thank to focus you. at home. Thank you. Chris, you should be Thank embarrassing you. yourself. Yeah. You should be embarrassed of yourself. Thank embarrassed. You. <laughs> And about, we're going to stop the clapping. We're going to get on to the next one. Or we're going to stop this thing right now. Go ahead. Next. You're going to shut down public comments. Thank you. They don't want to hear it. That's the thing. They don't want to hear the truth. Kristen Anderson. Good evening. As, mem as members of the board, you work for me, a random citizen. One of my expectations is to conduct yourself in a professional manner especially when out in public. You are representing this town. However, attending a high-profile murder case, swearing at bystanders, and making derogatory comments to other random citizens that are currently running for specific seats within the town. Well, that is extremely inappropriate and unacceptable and should not be tolerated. <clears throat> no, I do not tolerate it. With that being said, we're part of, dude, you got to go. Do you not understand? Thank you. And have a good evening. Good Paul McAuliffe. <clears throat> Over the past several weeks and months, we've been lectured on things like decency, integrity, transparency, accountability, and leadership with profanity-laced rhetoric by an individual running for a school committee position. I'll start Excuse by me, acknowledging that when me, Mrs. Schumann was here and speak. read the letter in front of the board, it was obvious that it had its intended effect. She was upset and shaking. You don't have a heart if you didn't feel for her. The, the origin of the letter was never actually determined, but nobody questioned it, its impact on Ms. Schumann. And I think we can all agree that nobody should ever be made to feel that way. That being said, about two months ago, I myself received a communication from the individual in the running for school committee reading the following. Do you really want me to focus on you? Do you really want me to dig and find out your connection to the corruption? I've never done a thing to you or, she names a citizen who I have no personal affiliation with, this is my only suggestion, and I said the same to this unnamed citizen, pretend I don't exist or prepare, misspelled, for me to fight back. I'm not fighting any one individual. I'm fighting to make a less toxic environment for all of our children. Why are yours in private? That's what I've been told. We have such great schools. Who's paying for the private school? I haven't wasted my time looking into you, but maybe it's time. Unlike the letter Ms. Schumann received, this, this message had a timestamp, date stamp, name, and photo attached. What I have to say to this person is go ahead and dig, whatever the hell that means. I can tell you what you'll find. You'll find me probably laughing at something inappropriate or making a comment on social media that's maybe unpopular in your circle. You know what that means? It means I have a personality and that I'm flawed, just like you, just like every other person in this room and in town, everyone. And even though I'm nothing special, 
Maybe you'll just ruin me forever. Wouldn't that be wonderful? Good for you. But in the meantime, while you try and dredge up something damning that'll cripple my reputation, I encourage you to take your own advice and instead pretend I don't exist. Don't talk about my kids anymore, ever. And don't threaten me. In fact, maybe rethink your entire approach on how you address people that think differently than you, especially if you're trying to secure their vote to help oversee the development of our children. Over here. This way. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I am not going to allow any Go confrontation. I am not going to allow any confrontation. Thank you. I'm going to ask you to please. I'm going to have you to please take a seat. Mark Grossman. Meadows Ave. And this will, this is, is this the last one? Yep. yep. Yeah, go ahead, Mr. Gross. We just first of all, everyone's respectful when you speak, and you're not, you know, you're not the same. That was rude. This way, this way. So um, I find it deplorable and not only unfair for individuals who think they know the facts to issue a blanket denunciation of the town's police force, all of whom are decent, hardworking, respectful oh. officers. To insinuate these officers are corrupt officers that have grown up here that, and uh, have families here would risk their pension, everything they've worked for in their career is insulting. I've grown up with numerous of them and know them and their families personally and to question their character is wrong. We are fortunate to have a great police department. Um, I just want to say to the people that are here that from out of town, I mean, there's really no, there's no place. I mean, there's, this way. There's, yeah, there's, there's no this place. Way. I feel like there's no place for these people that don't live in Canton. They're here for one reason and what? problems. They don't care for the better of the town uh, causing a mockery. And I think anyone that associates themselves, I mean, with them, I mean, these people like find a hobby, like, well, go to your own town. The problem is you know? the truth hurts. Okay, that's it, that's it. And now the truth hurts. I'm gonna ask you to sit down. Yeah. Or ask that's you why they don't want to hear this. ask you to sit down or leave. Or it's do not, his legs. But do not make a comment. We have people coming here. Oh, my glasses dressed up as a clown. I mean, it's ridiculous that I, you know, I just feel like this is. Um, we should be concentrating. There's enough going on in Canton, and um, and we should focus on the issues. Thank you. Thank you. Is that it? This is a plan. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. But that, that hasn't and been 15 minutes. 15 minutes. It hasn't been 15 minutes. 15 minutes. Three minutes, 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 minutes apiece. We have a motion to adjourn. The clock. There was still. Motion. There was still six minutes left. Second. Yeah. We have a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. Come on. Second. Yep. The buzzer Second. only went. The buzzer went right. only twice. How is that possible? Thank you. Unbelievable. Five. 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 Just three more minutes. Five. Five. It doesn't say five speakers. It says fifteen minutes. Do you guys not understand that? Don't think that people don't see what the hell's going on here. Right. Keep talking. Why is the sound going off? Unbelievable. Ooh. Some of the rocks, so they gave up and sold it. Wow. <laughs> That's unbelievable. Shutting down the public from public comment at a public forum. I mean, listen, it's, uh, these people, they don't want to hear the truth. And obviously, we heard the truth today in court. And people will continue to deny here that, um, you know, this has all been confirmed by the feds in Karen Reed's case. Karen Reed did not kill John O'Keefe. The evidence is factual and it points that Karen Reed did not kill John O'Keefe. I mean, we heard that today. Uh, the thing that really sticks with me in all of this is this. There was an independent expert that came in that was hired by the feds during this investigation to come back and recreate the scene. Someone that has very high credentials, someone that has three PhDs in this area. He did the experimentation. He did the reenactment and came in the conclusion of that report. And I hope that we get to see this report at some time. That at the end in the conclusion of his report, he said there is no way that the injuries to John O'Keefe were done by Karen Reed's SUV. And furthermore, 
There was no way that Karen's Karen created uh, the injuries to John O'Keefe via her SUV. That her SUV never struck John O'Keefe. So where is the default in all of this? Where does this all land? I can tell you where. 34 Fairview. And I don't know how the Commonwealth of Massachusetts continue to go on and push this case to trial. It'll be an absolute travesty. It's an embarrassment to the justice system. It's a, a violation of someone's rights, Karen Reed. It does not bring justice to John O'Keefe. And while they've been wasting your money, taxpayer money, to try to keep pushing Karen Reed to go to trial to be falsely accused of this murder, they could have been using that money to investigate what went on in 34 Fairview that night. And I have a problem. When a call is made at 2.22 a.m. in the morning between two officers and then the DA, and then immediately right after that at 2.27, five minutes later, someone that was in that house Googles how long to die in cold. And then the instruction comes down from the DA, DA Morsi, for those people to destroy their phones. If that's not, not more corruption, than you've ever heard in your entire life, then I don't know what to tell you. And I don't know how all of these trolls can continue to go on and say that this is all made up by the defense. Even Jennifer Coffindaffer today, her own people, the organization that she's been employed by, her peeps, her peeps out there even said, even put on the record that 227 happened and exposed all of this other shit that's going on in this case. This case needs to be dismissed now, and it needs to be dismissed right now. This cannot go on anymore. Karen Reed is factually innocent, and what's happening is this is all coming out now, and these people don't want to hear it because they're all fucking part of it. They're all fucking part of it. So my friends, I'll leave you with that thought tonight. I appreciate every single person here that came out tonight to watch the stream, watch the earlier courtroom stream uh, over at Turtle Boy. Had a fantastic day over there with Turtle Boy and the Glare. We got almost 6,200 people watching that. And people need to know, more people need to know about the corruption here that's going on in Massachusetts. And it's pretty thick. And it's pretty sad. But I want to thank everybody, all the newcomers that have come into this channel, all the new people that have recently come over and subscribed, all the comments on the videos, the continued support. I will keep elevating this platform, and I'm so excited. I'm about a month away to getting into my own module working studio, and I cannot wait until I have live guests that come into the studio, and we will continue to talk about this case and continue to expose the corruption that's going on in Canton because Karen Reed needs to be a free woman and John O'Keefe needs justice. All right, my friends, I'll see you all soon. Go over and head over and support Turtle Boy at 9 p.m. He needs your support. And thank you so much for being part of the LTL family. I'll see you all soon. Bye. Said it feels we're the only ones fighting for the truth of what happened to John O'Keefe. And me and my family and my attorneys and my team have marshaled every resource to get to the truth. It just feels like no one else wants it. And Karen, just to be clear, you didn't do it. We know who did it, Steve. We know. And we know who spearheaded this cover-up. You all know. Yes, we do. And no, she didn't do it. No, she didn't do it. This is an innocent woman. She didn't do it. I tried to save his life. Yeah. I tried to save his life at six in the morning. I was covered in his blood. I was the only one trying to save his life. Why do you admit to it? He didn't, she didn't admit to it. She didn't admit to anything close to that. Nothing close to that. And you should know that. That was like three or four times she admitted to it. No, no she didn't. that's not true. She asked a question. It makes absolutely no sense. That is the Commonwealth grasping at straws. If it walks like a duck and talks like a duck, it's a duck.
We have the eight letters. We've seen them. We've read them. We are using them. The genie cannot be put back in the bottle. Yeah, LTL true crime, we going deep in the dark Yeah, yeah, peeling back the layers, expose the hidden mark oh, yeah. From the streets to the alleys where the secrets lie Getting into minds of the wicked, no alibi what? LTL true crime, unraveling the web of evil No stone left unturned, we diving to the prime Yeah, we digging up the dirt, bringing justice to the crime LTL true crime, unveiling dark realities every time Yeah, LTL true crime, we going deep in the dark yeah. Peeling back the layers, exposed to him more oh, yeah. From the streets to the alleys where the secrets lie Didn't think some minds of a wicked, no alibi <laughs> Hey, I think they don't true crime. I'm done with dark realities every time. Every time. Yeah, LTL true crime.